Well, we got him. We got another one, ladies and gentlemen. We got another special guest for you guys. But you got to stay tuned for just a couple more minutes if you want to hear him. But first, we got to start out with the boys. They're here every single week. Welcome on in from the sidelines, episode number 71. Randall Baird, how you doing, dude? You look like a DJ tonight. Something's different. What's going on? Uh, it's it's these headphones, you know, where I got the mic. I was I upgraded the mic, but uh, I still stuck with the the headphones, the little earbuds. Uh, get rid of those shit. What the? F we're upgrading. <laughs> we're we're getting ready. We're actually this this is podcasting. Production this right is here. Podcasting. Production value. Leveling it up. And that other voice you are hearing on, uh, well, in your ears, uh, that's uh, Stephen Hatch. What's going on, buddy? You're coming in tonight. Oh, ladies and goobers, we are back for another great episode, dude. Now I, f I feel like I lose count over, over 69. Is there even a point now? Yeah, like, no, it's, every show is just 69.2.3.4. That's just all. I like that a lot. That's what we need. <laughs> Dude, you, you look like the guy who'd like it a lot. You're letting the mullet go tonight. It is flowing, bro. <laughs> Dude, it, it is getting long. I'm not it's, even going to lie, dude. The, the man, flow is I, getting crazy. I think you've maybe just had it back or something the last couple of weeks. But yeah, dude, it's uh, you're, you're looking good. Just want to let you know that, bro. Bro Thank to bro. You, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll, instead of trimming it, I'll be like, you know what? Just trim up the top. You know what I'm saying? When my hair yeah, goes, blesses me again. All right. All right. Like the, uh, <laughs> I mean, is it? Okay. The, the, the stuff I don't know. How do you trim up the mullet? Like, is it what, what? Like, what's the what's the go-to move? You're at the salon. Yeah. What are you telling them? You know, what's going okay, on? Let me tell you. So, my hair, my hair lady knows me very, very well. I can walk in there and be like, shh, 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 shh. And she'll be like, <laughs> chip chop. No joke. And she'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so you're she'll no help to anyone else out there who wants to I'm grow sorry, out a mullet. Like, you, dude, it, it's just, it's a thing that everybody has with their barber, you know? It's like. Okay, that's true, yeah. It's sacred. It's sacred. You can't really, I can't really describe it besides like, you know, the typical thing where it's like every man's got his barber, you know, but <laughs> no, besides it's, that, it's a hard uh, way. It's hard way to describe. I'll give you that. Cause yeah, no, when I go into uh shout out tugboat, yeah, that's my barber's nickname. He's badass. But, uh, <laughs> whenever I go tugboat. into him, I literally just sit down in the chair and he starts cutting my hair and it's what I want every time. It's so. you know, except like you just you said the same thing. I know. I, I know. So that's why I'm like, I kind of you know, get it. I'm sorry. You know, so you like, they know you so well. Yeah. What up, Brando? Nah. I don't I don't get it. I, I don't I don't have a barber. I don't have a person. I feel like I, I switch every one, after every two or you're, three. You're wrong. You're just wrong. Uh, I don't let other people touch my hair. You know what? You know what? You know what? We're on a very off topic tangent, but I love it. So let's bring in our guest because I want to hear what his uh, final answer is. He's going to be the tiebreaker and whether you need a barber or not. So let's first introduce him. Guys, we got Christian is, do you go by both last names? I know you sent me both last names. I didn't know if there's one you go by more or not, but he's the host of the In the Pits podcast. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself. All right, so I'm Christian Dallas Smith. That's actually a very recent change. Uh, me and my wife finally got around to hyphenating our names. Uh, we got nice. married like in June of 2020, like height of COVID. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, just finally got around to it. It's a little and, low on uh, the priority list. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I do not have a barber, uh, but I'd say the reason for that was my background. Like I was military family. So most of the time it was like barber just was the, hey, let's go get your head shaved on base. So uh, not part of my blood there. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. And we're, we're, we're sticking to that. We're not, you're not, not leveling up the style game now. No. Nah, it's not important to me. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's look, he's that's already got minus. he's already got an ex girlfriend. So like what more does this man need? You know? He was able to get one in. Dude, Dude that, also that's heard. more than what most of us got. So congratulations. Dude, bro. That's true. Yo, me and you, Hatch. Me and you, bro. Uh yeah, <laughs> No, we don't. That's why we're single, bro. Um <laughs> So let's, I mean, let's, let's jump on into it, man. As I mentioned earlier, you are the host of another uh, paintball podcast If people haven't heard that yet in the pits. Uh, how would you describe that show? You know, it's uh, from your own mouth. What's, uh, what's going on over there? So it started off 
uh, as kind of being focused on telling the stories of members of the specifically Texas paintball community. But I wanted to focus not just on pro players. Uh, I wanted to get coaches, like basically anybody that's involved in the scene, no matter what they do. So I've gotten uh, like divisional players, uh, media members, vendors. I've gotten Clint Riddle on, uh, who's a artist. He does a lot of like the Hormisa yep. stuff. Uh, I've he, gotten yeah. He did an uh, awesome piece of Hatch not too long ago. Yeah, so yeah. I, dude, I was blown away. Shout out Clint. I know he listens to the show. What's up, bro? Yeah, Clint's dope. Lie. Clint's dope. Uh, just a couple hours ago, I finished recording an episode with a man named uh, Wade Martin, who just started a new team up in Dallas called the Dallas Meanies. He has a lot of kids. Uh, I think he has like three different like uh, parent child combos, and then a brother sister duo. Uh, okay. across his program awesome. and uh, Man, yeah, gets on, his, on his team they uh, submitted a couple of lines into the uh, Star Series uh, Division 6 3 man and they took first and second place and their finals MVP or event MVP was a 13 year old girl so Hell nice. yeah. okay Dude. That yeah, stories insane. like that are things like that needs more coverage within the scene, not just pro players, pro coaches, pro teams, but like stories like that, which are just like super cool. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, well, and I think that's, I mean, it's something that resonated with the name because I've, I've heard that tagline before, like the telling the stories of the Texas paintball scene. But I definitely love like, you know, your naming choice, the in the pits, because that's that's definitely what it feels like, because as you walk around an event, when you're, you know, walking through the divisional side on an NXL, the second you jump from like one side of a pit, even to the other side, it's a completely different culture. There's a completely different story going on. If you jump fields, it's a different division. It's a different battle. And it is kind of, you know, interesting to hear those conversations going on and, you know, the differences of all these people who are coming together to play paintball really close to each other. Um, and so that was something that resonated to me with the name. And uh, yeah, no, I just I wanted to point that out because I thought that was awesome. Yeah, it, it was there was a little bit of a process in figuring out what name to go with. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I settled on. And I think it's kind of served me pretty well since then. Solid for sure. Well, yeah, man. Um, All right. So we got to we got to get right into it because you gave me a disclaimer before we started our show. I do also have to point this out. You did double duty tonight. So last week I did double duty and our audience knows that I talked about it. But you actually hosted your show just before this because uh, you're, you know, college student. You got, you know, stuff going on. And so uh, this was the time slot that works. So, hey, we appreciate you coming on and spending and kind of Thank sacrificing you, some of your time for us tonight. Uh, but you you also let me know you're concussed right now. So what's going on man you're going through the concussion protocol how uh how did yeah. that go down so um i play on a division three team called the texas titans out of san antonio and this past weekend we had like a in-house kind of fuck around day and uh love those yeah and we <laughs> we use it mostly to shoot like our leftover tournament paint throughout the year so we had i want to say like close to 40 cases across our three lines or something Damn. like that and, that's a lot uh, of fuck around paint a, <laughs> Yeah, definitely a few standoffs that happened uh, throughout the course of the day. Definitely uh, some shenanigans and debauchery. Uh, like we we did uh, seven on sevens, but throughout the course of the point, your team also had uh, two respawns. You had a shotgun and Modelo to get back in. So <laughs> all right, you know days Dude. days like that. And uh, I just that's a, that's I took good one game, bud. like. <laughs> yeah, I took just one ball to like a, the soft spot of my head, like just above the the headbands, and it, it was only one, and it wasn't like uh, like malicious. And the guy chronoed before and everything. It was just like you know, hit hit the found the button and hit it. Dude, rang your shit. Yeah, I've, was, had, a, I've had a couple of those. Not even gonna lie. Probably like, a little dude, harder like ball that. too. Like, cause you definitely feel it. Like uh, NXL tournament paint, you'll get that one random like hardball or something like that was the one that was in the sun and that one fucking oh shit oh god damn yeah. but then the rest it's like oh okay that was kind of nice yeah, it really it hurt that bad I'm trying to paint it happens. that bad no but tournament dude, paint it's great bro, when you get that one i'm not even gonna lie I, I, not to that extent to a concussion but there have been some where i've caught like right on like the top of like where the mass meets the head right like right above the temple dude those ones are not fun makes my eyes waters making me look like a bitch looks like i'm crying i'm like it, just, yeah. it hurt man it fucking hurt. <laughs> that's why i gotta use like the cool lens so nobody can see my eyes nobody can see me crying <laughs> then you just leave your mask on in the pits that's when you know yep. you're just like no one talk to me yep 
Just head, yeah. uh, head nods only. Yep. Yeah, those are the moments you're like, I don't like paintball very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, that's one thing I say. I probably said this on the show a couple times, but whenever you do get someone into it for the first time, they're really want, wanting to play like competitive paintball and take that step into the NXL, you know, maybe like that local league. Sometimes there are points where you will get fucked up so bad where you're like, oh man, do I even want to keep doing this anymore? And, you know, some of those... I think you too. Sometimes you gotta let people know that there are gonna be situations like that. That's the most I'm roundabout uh, way to say that, but <laughs> no, no I, I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, I uh, so y'all remember Cups Layout last year where it had like basically the reincarnation of the wall up at the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. So the practice immediately following, my youngest brother who just started college, he's like, "Hey, I want to come play with you, but like actually step on the." the speedball field and so you know we brought him on and we're just you know kind of mixing in with whatever walk-ons and stuff and uh he's never played like five on five or anything like that so i give him the simplest job i was like hey you're gonna go up to the wall and you're gonna look left and if you hear the call cowboy that means they're right on the other side of you and you're gonna go just shoot the piss out of him and you're probably yeah. gonna get shot uh but you know what? That's how you play this spot. Uh, but the thing was, uh, the other players that we were playing with were not very experienced. They weren't from my team at all. Uh, they definitely gave a wrong call to him. Oh, but you know what? Props to, props to my youngest brother. He went through like a champ, and then he definitely wore it from three different sides. <laughs> nice. and he, uh, yeah, I was like, that's after a that, bold call. Yeah. yeah, Kid, go up the middle. First point. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, after that, he was like, you know what? I'm going to go over to the red ball field. <laughs> Dude, when duty calls, man, when duty calls, duty you just, gotta, calls, you just yeah. gotta send it, bro. <laughs> yeah, Not no, again. it's, uh, I mean, dude, center players are different. Like, you know, I'm thinking of like Marv back in the day when the wall was a big thing. He he loved that shit. He was like, yeah, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to eat 30 balls. And like, yeah, because I'm going to go do it to their dude too. And he's like, that's an even trade. So yeah, no, guys, uh, guys who played the wall were built different, man. I agree. From when I played on my old team, I was that wall guy. Yeah, no, so. makes sense. Does anyone is anyone surprised in the comment section that it was Hatch? You, you know, because <laughs> that really is like the spot where you get shot the most. I can, I'm I'm trying to think. I'd probably say the snake is now probably where you get shot like the most. Like well, like when you're like if you're an aggressive out, one, probably yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like you're if getting you're getting out, out there quick the and yeah, yeah. But back in the day, I would probably say it was the wall. Like that was the spot where, dude, if you saw a guy coming out of the wall, that guy was getting torched. <laughs> so. No, yeah. yeah. You wanted to remind him not to go back up there, even though yeah, exactly. they would go back up there the next 100%. time. It was it was just this pain tournament that we kept doing back and forth. So good. All right. Well, let's uh let's jump back over to you for a little bit. So uh I think you, you know, kinda answered some of it, but what was you know, what was kind of the like jump off point for in the pits? um like when did you really you know like all right i gotta get a mic all right i gotta you know jump into this and what was kind of the reasoning behind that because i think this is important for you know maybe people out there who want to start their own show maybe they feel like they have something to say um you know i just kind of wanted to pick your brain on like the actual beginnings of your show and jumping in and all right let's you know let's tackle this and let's go head on so to be completely honest it was it was kind of a like rapid start um i had this idea driving home this three hour journey from a USXBL tournament where we got knocked out in quarterfinals. I'm just pissed off <laughs> alone uh, with my thoughts, got nothing to listen to in the car Athletes ride, plane home. ride, mm -hmm. athletes car ride hatch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, it'd be interesting if I just started a podcast and like did it about Texas. Cause at that time we didn't really have all that much. I mean, verbal has been uh, getting his name around the national scene. Uh, but uh, other than him and the couple of pro teams that are in Texas, like I don't know very much about other players within my region, which is super weird. Like Texas, it felt very segmented at the time. Cause even though like you think of Texas and there's a lot of great paintballers, but when you're actually like in the regional scene there, there's like, well, I mean, now there's like eight different major cities that you have to keep in mind. There's, uh, mm -hmm. you've got San Antonio, Dallas, Austin, Houston. Uh, the Valley has really come up lately. Uh, Lubbock, El Paso, Corpus Christi. Like there's, there's eight 
legitimately eight different regions of Texas where top teams are coming out of. And at that time, I didn't know very much about any of them except for where I was local to. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had the idea. I got home. I messaged uh, one of my good friends, Colt Roberts, on San Antonio X Factor about the idea. I was like, hey, I would like to interview you as the first guest and he agreed to come on it uh (laughs) kicked off the show and then very quickly i had a lot of support uh getting a bunch of different people on i think episode two i had get that shot who's a uh media guy from the valley episode three i think was uh I, I want to say it was either Jell Stewart or Niles Burgess, who's the owner of the Texas Cyclones. And I just tried to keep it like pretty varied as far as like who they were, where they were from, like not stack it with too many Dallas guys or not stack it with too many like pros in a row, you know, things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. No. Makes yeah. Sense. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I like that thought process, you know, of trying to get it out there and you know, you're really, your, your, your target wasn't just one area it was to be in general. So yeah, no, I like that kind of lineup that you set there of just all different places um all right area, so let's seriously. let's let's pick your brain a little bit who's who's been your favorite guest let's say you oh, know gosh, who, who's dude, you beat me and, oh, that was my question well bro. and i was gonna say there's there's two ways i kind of want this answered because i think it would be interesting is like who was your favorite person to have a conversation with like you know what what was that conversation that you loved and b what is an episode that you think everyone should go back and listen to like what is one that you think maybe that conversation was very important maybe it was just really funny it was a great entertaining episode um you know if they are different what are those two episodes um so i've had so earlier tonight i recorded episode 77 so i've been going at it for a little bit now um as far as my favorite conversation to have um Honestly, just a few weeks ago, I had J.D. Lukow, uh, the owner of Paintball Fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just tell the amount of passion that he has for the game whenever <laughs> yes. you listen to him talk. So I, he's definitely I've had the honor one. of uh, meeting him down at his field and just seeing him in his element down there. And it's yeah, he just kind of puts off this like this energy of, you know, like, I, I don't know. He just makes paintball possible. And you could tell like it's yeah I, I i love the things that you know hydra and all that stuff have been doing down there um paypal patriot for sure you for know sure. when it comes yeah. to like the like one of those guys he's uh, he's on that list for sure yeah 100 percent uh another one that i would say to go back and listen to uh i mean maddie marshall was a great one um Obviously. one of the first ones where <laughs> i i got uh alex martinez the owner of san antonio x factor when i got him on which was like episode nine i was like oh i've made it <laughs> like uh, <laughs> you, you know you get you get that first like big name and i'm like oh where where can i possibly go from here yeah um, no and alex is kind of cool too because i feel like uh when you know i came into the game in 2012 as our audience knows but i you know he was someone who was in a lot of kind of media and had his face out there a lot with you know some of the projects that planet eclipse was doing um you know yeah the roster that was a huge one and so So good he definitely is kind of you know as, as he's gotten older he's wanted to step back from that a little bit which is totally fair but i think you know that is an interesting guess it's kind of like you know seeing you know he's still owning x factor obviously and you know helping out and you know he's still definitely a paintball patriot but i think he's one who's doing it more kind of behind the scenes now which uh which is interesting as well to hear his thoughts and opinions on stuff yeah for sure uh, i know lately like especially post covid uh so he also owns a construction business and uh the housing market in texas has just gotten absolutely insane yep. since covid and so mm-hmm. he's been he's been very busy with that um and then as far as another episode that i suggest people should go back and listen to uh i actually um starting with year two of the show i started doing uh round table episodes where i get uh, a couple of people together that are uh very similarly like in the same area of paintball and we just have like a group discussion on things so the uh, i've done two round tables the first one was on building a brand within paintball and i was able to get uh ryan brand uh of project and uh x factors coach i also had um jd lucal uh verbal and jc lamone who sells jerky uh but is he that named, unos he, or yeah unos jerky mm. yep 
So I had all four of them on and we just kind of had a round table about building a brand and, and like the different uh, spaces that they were in. And then the uh, second round table that I had was actually just last week where uh, I got a bunch of like the representatives from like division three, division two, II, division one teams in Texas. And we just talked about, hey, what is it that we want to see within like a local tournament series next season? So uh, nice. I, fe- I felt like, uh, you know, round tables like that are uh, v- I I learn more from those than anything else. Yeah, yeah no, and that, with all that uh, input, go Brandon. You yeah, haven't it, said anything else. So sorry, no. It it, it was going to be uh, part of one of my questions is was the roundtable because, um, you know we've seen interviews and just discussions uh, with paintball players or people in the industry and everything, but just the, the roundtable was such a unique idea. You know, um, for another podcast or <clears throat> stuff uh, with like round tables esque or like a panel, uh, a panel of people. But I really did like that concept of of a bunch of different people's perspectives and and opinions on everything. Um, where did where how did you come up with that? What inspired you for that? Um, so that was a little bit of wanting to spice things up uh, within like the show. Um, but also I just wanted to learn. I wanted it, uh, the show to also be a place like, Hey, we can not just talk about the stories and the history of everybody, but, uh, give them also another space where they can really get into like their expertise and what they're truly passionate about currently versus just historically. So, uh, I, I figured that the round table format and getting a couple of people together to like bounce ideas off of each other, share their experiences would be, would, uh, be a good, um, uh, I guess, avenue for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel, especially having your show live definitely uh, benefits that, that round table um, aspect of it. Right. Um, getting getting live live questions in for everyone um oh, it's such a cool concept I, I, I was glad when i saw it you know watched both of them and i didn't i didn't finish the second one yet um but <laughs> yeah it's awesome he's busy yeah, doing non-doctor is, uh, things <laughs> the second one is definitely uh a little bit longer and it's a little bit more like kind of locally focused so i can understand if uh especially everybody out there because there are a surprising amount of people listening not from texas um so for that one it's you know a little bit more local challenges and things that we've liked or didn't like but yeah i definitely go back and listen to the round tables uh and and what you said about the getting the live questions i mean that also helps me like oh i didn't even think to think about it from that angle you know things like that Mm -hmm. yeah definitely helps uh when you're hosting a show to have kind of live feedback on where you should direct it uh no i could definitely relate to that uh i great question brandon because yeah i I, do think you know those are an interesting concept um and we see those in other industries and so yeah it was it was cool to see one of those brought in um let's transition a little bit to i guess you know the the event you're hosting this weekend uh unfortunately by the time this is out on public it has already taken place but uh patreon listener if you're down in texas and you hear this uh yeah head over to it's gonna happen at x factor right yes okay and uh nice. i'm i'm referring to a uh, little joust we got a yeah a little little event going on um so is this you know this is something hatch brought up before the show and uh this is you know kind of a good question for people who want to hold events similar to this is this a uh like a hormesis event like is it kind of is it an official event is it just using the same rule set like kind of walk us through that because i think that is confusing to some people when you know they hear the same term is it you know using the same scoring system like you know walk us through that a little bit yeah so the best way i can describe it it's definitely hormesis inspired uh, so I participated in the joust and in the duel that was at paintball fit back over the summer. Mm-hmm. And I was a huge fan of the format and also like how it brought together like a whole bunch of players that otherwise wouldn't interact, brought in new people. And I want, I kind of saw it and said, this would be a great like community building event. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to hold my own and also like, I'm, I'm just a fan of the one V one format in general. Um, so I just asked around, I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm gonna, 
start this. Uh, Hormesis, they've like publicly posted their uh, their grid for the for the bunker layout and their rule set. And I've kind of made my own version of that. I've added to it a lot of ways, especially with the cards, um, mm -hmm. which I. Uh, that, I, I that was saw that and I want you to break that down because that is a really interesting concept that I think you've added to it. I'm very yeah, intrigued. for sure. Uh, so yeah, basically it was intended to be a community building thing. It is this Sunday at X factor. Um, and there's actually an, another thing is that there's a lot of prizes that have been donated, uh, for nice. anybody who's playing. So we've got prizes that from, from project, which I actually work for project as well. Um, uh, prizes from Hormesis themselves, prizes from Hydra, from X Factor. Uh, but there's, there's some jerky on there, I think. As well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uno's is actually, uh, and we'll we'll get into that too because Uno's That's is going to have a, a very special part to play. So, okay, awesome. So yeah. So yeah. So I, I guess for you know people who maybe didn't hear about the Hormesis event, you're probably you're under a rock, so you're you're wrong. But I'll just give you a quick update. The uh, the event, you know, it was a simple little one v one, and the joust is the more kind of fun team building aspect where yes it is competitive we're trying to you know go out there and play pet, uh, paintball but you know there's no 10 grand on the line we're not you know playing for 1v1 titles uh it's more for the team and are you using the same teams that they had uh yes i will be using the uh glories and the magnificent i thought about uh putting other names in there because you know as oliver says once you're on either the glorious or the magnificent you're there for life and i didn't want that kind of commitment on my uh players <laughs> locally so uh but we just ended up uh sticking with it okay yeah so yeah nice. you join one of the two teams and uh yeah so i mean you're part of a like how big are the squads like how big was the one at fit and then how big are you know how many people are signed up for this so the one at fit, I think we ended up having like 15 on 15 or 16 on 16. Okay. Uh, usually so it, it can get pretty at, big. Yeah. Usually it caps at 20 or 25 per team. Mm -hmm. uh, as of right now, I believe we have 22 players signed up. Uh, we're going to cap it at 40. So, uh, you know, we still got a couple of days to go. We'll see uh, where that ends up. But uh, but yeah, it's basically just a choose your champion. Uh, you've got uh it, for us because we're gonna cap it at 20 we're planning on going 90 minutes but it's a it's a running clock so even during the break time uh that 90 minutes ticks down and it's just choose your champion winner stays on loser uh sends the next player on their roster out and you keep going until time runs out but and and this is a big but because i think with yours you've expanded on this system um generals in the official version have a trump card a couple instances where they can say hey get off the box you've you've beaten seven of us in a row you know get out of there uh mm, but in yours momentum. you've expanded that and uh, i think it would be cool to kind of go through some of those because i thought some of them were really interesting ideas oh yeah and so in the original one uh each general had two trump cards where if if you're like on a hot streak, the opposing general can play it on you and you have to get out. Um, but uh, a rule that we didn't know about that Oliver kind of made up on the spot in the Texas joust was if both trump cards are played on the same player, it ejects them from the match. Oh. And we we did okay. not know about that at that time. And uh, that's so, pretty harsh, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it definitely very harsh. And we actually... Uh, found out about that on accident because we used both of our trump cards on Jacob Johnson, J Money, uh, <laughs> place for paintball fit. And I mean, so good, we, good choice, uh, but we, uh, yeah, definitely a great choice. But we accidentally did it to him with like five minutes left to go in the first joust, and so the second joust comes around, and we're like, wait, is this still the rule? We're just going to use him right away on him and just get him out, like. <laughs> Uh, and so Found a little meta course, tactic there in the rule set. <laughs> yeah, pretty. I mean, we were like, you know what? It, it's going to happen. And uh, because we did that, um, Archie Montemayor, who was the general on the other side, um, he was like, you know what? You, you're going to do it to our guy. We're going to do it to your guy. And that event, I, I had the uh, most aces, which are kills off break. And so, of course, uh, and I I actually just started working for Archie like a couple weeks prior. So. <laughs> Course, so yeah you know, he was fresh on your target I, I, I too. got the double trump card there nice. pocket nine that's sick that's sick that is amazing so, yeah. dude 
That's and awesome. I actually changed my uh, Instagram handle to Pocket Nines uh, after the event. Yeah. Hell yeah! Nice. All right, that's cool. What I like flex, that. Dude. The fact that um, they have to use us, they have to use their, you know, their ultimate ability to to get you off the field. <laughs> yeah, like, is that to think about? Bro, Damn. yeah, you use both their flashes for that. No, good shit. Um, that is insane. So, okay, so they give you nines there, but it didn't necessarily matter which card. It was always just like a a trump card, right? Or or was it correct? Yeah, yeah okay. they, so they just I'm assuming they only had like one deck for the entire tour. So mm, they were okay. just kind of going down the list. Like I think yeah. uh, J Money got Queens both times. Okay, cool. Mm. But and the reason why I'm pointing this out in case people aren't aware, your your rule set, you have kind of set up cards that do, you know, different abilities or, you know, kind of have a different ultimate attached to them as, as Hatch called it. Uh yeah. so yeah, I mean run through that list because I, I, I yeah, I thought some of them were really interesting. And that's why I want to get them out there. Yeah, this was a lot of fun uh, to come up with, and uh, I didn't want anybody to get ejected by any means, but, you know, make it a little bit <laughs> yeah. more interesting. So, so is that still in the rule set? or <laughs> No, no. Uh, and I actually uh, came up with rules to kind of prevent uh, stacking cards as much as possible on one player, even though it is kind of an honor. So uh, the first card that I have here, and by the way, I got a, like, custom cards made for this. Oh, that looks sick. So, um, I like the sleeves, the first... too. These are PSA 10s. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the first card's the Joker, um, which we have a feel manager named todd green and he like everybody loves him at the field if you if you're around at all you know him you love him he takes care of us and so uh the joker if you play it then todd's gonna get to come play for your team and uh he plays until he's out and if he if you if you beat todd then the point doesn't count you just get him off the field but the <laughs> point doesn't get added to the tally. that's dope okay so it's kind of nice. like uh you can't yeah. lose if, if he's out there yeah celebrity guest star yeah, it's a yeah, slab nice. shot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, each team gets one Joker, uh, and then next card is the Ace, which the General will play if they want to put themselves on the field. So our two Generals are going to be uh, Colt Roberts and Alex Martinez. So uh, they play the Ace, they uh, play themselves onto the field, but because you know they are both pro players and some of the best to ever do it, I had to put a <laughs> cap on it. Uh, so it's either they win, they play until they lose, or until they run the table on the other team. Mm. Damn. Okay. Damn, run the table! Holy shit! Someone's got to get a win. <laughs> For sure. I mean, that could, that could very easily be 20 points. I was going to uh, say, yeah, it's like 11 point swing or something. Yeah, yeah if we insane. have max teams. Yeah. Yeah. God. So, so, yeah, the next cards, and I'll actually skip over these two. I'll come back to them in a little bit. Um, okay. So, uh, we'll talk about the jacks next. So, each team is going to get two jacks. Uh, the jacks are, uh, you run it back. So, if you're oh okay yeah so if your player lost and you want to get them back on the field you play a jack you get them back on you can also use it the other way around if your player won that and you want to bring the other opposing player so back just, on for a second l you know it you just pulls play the jack. same matchup back on so no matter yeah. of who win or who lost you're just same thing run it i love that it's it, ak gets his 1v1 that's essentially what's happening that, dude <laughs> i i would be like you know what run it <laughs> right no, Hatch, that out. would be the problem is like someone would you know someone would smoke you you'd smoke someone you'd just be like jack give me the jack give me the jack we're give going again one, and coach is one. like it's it's five <laughs> minutes of the game man like we're, we're not using cards this early come on let me hit it you know we, hey, we man, gotta hit those anything to induce a little bit more smack talk into this and that i love that for it. i love that all right so that was okay, the so next jack. card okay yeah, next card, uh, we got the twos, which are timeouts, two-minute timeout each. Time um, out. And then uh, the last two cards are the kings and the queens. So um, the kings are a trump card, but instead of just uh, sending you to the back of the line, uh, I'm actually doing a penalty box, uh, which we're calling the Uno's Jerky Luxury Lounge. So oh. uh, if you get sent there, the kings, you're there for five minutes. And while you're there, you get to pick out a bag of jerky. You get to sit back and relax, grab some Gatorade or some water. We'll have a cooler there. And so we're like also going to have... Or, or I guess heated during this time of the year. <laughs> yeah. And we're also going to have like a mini like target course where if uh, while you're in there, if you complete the target course, you also get like a small prize as well. Oh, nice. Damn. Okay. That All right. No, that's yeah, sick. Okay. A lot going on. We've got a lot of little goodies to give out. We've got, I think, like over 50 at this point. So 
Dude, that's so show amazing. up. You're gonna get something. God damn it. <laughs> oh yeah. So the kings are five minutes in the box, and you can't play two kings on the same person, and then you also can't play a uh, king on the general. Oh, so, okay. makes okay. sense. Yeah, that, that that's a good card game rule. You made sure the mm. loophole was closed on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You also. Oh, and you can't play. Obviously, you can't play jacks on generals either. And uh, that was gonna and then you can't game. you can't do it on Todd. Uh, Tons, oh yeah, tons, on, the, uh, on the Joker as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah, uh, that's... Then... <laughs> all right. So, so Magic, Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh. What is it? I know you played one because you closed that loophole. Uh, uh, Yu Gi Oh. Yep. That's there we go. Uh, yeah, yep. That's go, my guy. Dude. All right. <laughs> Pot agreed, baby. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> so that was Kings, and then that Queens. Was the Kings, and then the Queens are two minutes instead of five minutes. Um, okay. And so then just you a can't... short in time. But yeah. yeah, so you can't play two queens, you can't play two kings, but you can play a king and a queen on the same person. So you could spend up to seven minutes in the box. Seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Seven <laughs> minutes. Out of the 90, you're just chilling, eating some jerky. Oh, oh wait, yeah. So how, so how much time is total on the clock? 90 the, minutes. Yeah. Uh, oh, however, um, so it, it's running clock. Uh, however, uh, the clock will not be running during the final five minutes of the game. So yeah, because then it enters mm -hmm. like match play condo or like you know it's, yeah. it's down it's on the break it'll it'll go off yeah gotcha oh. wow interesting yeah it, it's now, a, it, uh, props to ollie like he did come up with a really cool concept uh and i think I they flushed it out more and more as they were doing the tour um and i mean shout out to christian by kind of adding that next level fla flavor into it um, I like you know, that, I think, dude, the, the people will always find those loopholes. People will always find well, those loopholes. That, but also, like, so I think good. the thing you pointed out with, like, the shit talking, like, yeah, yeah, you know, if, like, you, now you have, you know, the special, like, yeah, let's run it back feature, like, okay, there's gonna be a lot of, you know, all right, you know, yeah, fuck you, bro, like, yeah, let's do that again, <laughs> like, I don't know. It just prompts that type of stuff in the game, and, uh, you know, as someone in media, that's, that's shit I want to see, because that makes an exciting and entertaining, you know, event and moment. Yeah, for sure. And we are actually going to have a uh, one of my teammates who is a media member. Uh, his handle is AFG Filming. He actually just yeah. recently went pro. I think he was on the pro field at Cup for yeah, we, uh, for Adan, Infamous, I want right? to say. Adon? Yeah, Adon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I, we talked to him a little bit. He came over by the Lone Wolf tent. We you met met all the boys. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's awesome. So you guys play together on the same D3 team or... Yeah, so he was he was on uh, our D four line, and okay. I I started on the D four line with him, and then got bumped up. But Adon he took a step back from playing so that he could really focus on his uh, his photography and videography this year, and it's really paid off. Yeah, no, that's funny. Nice. I mean, that's that's a lot of the guys who are who are video or you know photo. At some point, we played, and then we're like. Well, we can actually like maybe make money to be here or like at least not go into debt to go to an event like you know it just changes it up and yeah no it's uh it's a labor of love you have to have something drawing you into the game for sure uh before you jump into this crazy side i mean shout out enrique literally won world cup d3 and then Let's mic go. drop never play Let's again go. <laughs> went out on top <laughs> yeah he, he's i don't he said i don't take l's <laughs> he's like yeah <laughs> had to get anymore. one more ring and then yeah said, drop out. it so. Well, for sure. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, I mean, one more time, that's happening at Audit X Factor, and that is, of course, you know, the weekend this is being recorded. What December? December what's 10th. The date? December tenth. So, hey, join the Patreon if you actually want to hear when stuff's happening. But uh, yeah, uh, is this something that maybe you might, you know, might run it back in the future? You know, kind of gauge what's going on with this this one, and then go from there. Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna see what the interest is. I'm, I mean, the thing with. Texas is that there seems to not be all that much interest in the 1v1 format, which I'm hoping to change. Like it's more than just about X ball is, is my thing. There's way sure. more ways to have fun in the game of paintball than just playing mm -hmm. five on five X ball. And I, I'm going to be I honest. X ball is actually one three of the man. like, well, three man's fun, but honestly, the reason why seven man was so much fun was because it just wasn't this like instant clusterfuck of like, God damn, you know, instantly lanes are held everywhere. You can't move anywhere. You have no creativity, which, you know, there is creativity on breakouts nowadays, but that happens within like 10 feet instead of like, all right, we got 50 feet to come up with some shit back in like the Super 7 days. So I do get why people kind of liked that almost like fast paced still, but not as Blitzkrieg fast as like a modern, you know, X-Ball, semi-pro and up kind of match can be. 
right? Because we should like, get all the bunkers. We should get all the bunkers, combine them, and then just play on like a bounce house. <laughs> okay, I you know? I don't know how that relates, Ash, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, new great format. idea. Great, I think new that format, new Cole. format just in one singular like kitty bounce house. So that's and no, it's, it's just a huge off the bounce break. House. Obviously, it's a huge bounce house because if it's a kitty bounce house, dude, people are, people are losing eyes and that shit. <laughs> but <laughs> no matter how good mass technology is, sorry, so. dog. Best I can do is ten more snake beams. Yep, yep, there we go. <laughs> exactly. That's the closest we're going to get to a bounce house, so you know what? I guess I'll take it. Yeah, we're just going to have to, like, make one. Make, like, a frame out of all the beams, and then it'll be, like, this big cube in the center of the... Oh, instead of a like wall, a we have you the cube. Like I actually have a photo that I, I'm going to upload here in the chat here. So uh, one of the guys nice. at my field does... Uh, he just, like, makes a random line layout basically every other week during the off season, and he's definitely committed some crimes with his layouts. And uh, this photo right here... He's just with is, the same uh, Oh yeah! Oh God! Oh, what, the hell? what is this man done, Dude. <laughs> Sasha? I am calling you out, sir. You, I, that layout was over a year ago, and you still have to pay for what you've done. I I can tell you're holding a grudge, cause yeah, that's that that I. It, okay, I people, you'll just have Dude, to see it on like screen. That was so much fun. That looks there, like so there much just fun. is. If you're listening to audio, <laughs> there just is no snake. He essentially just made a cube with all the snake beams at the center fifty, and 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 it's just. You know, some cans and a couple mini Aztecs, like in God and King and areas like that. Uh, you know, if the snake beams that's that a like nightmare. pointed out, if the snake beams, they're like, you know, the the bracket part, if they were faced the other way, that actually wouldn't be too bad. So, uh, it looks sick, but if those beams were like reversed, dude, that, that would just, be insane. That just looks like a nightmare, Hatch, because you also play the Doritos, so you would love it because you dude, would be like, it's the same. It's because they don't let me play the snake. That's what I'm saying. But, mm, but no, yeah, I don't that, think that's the reason. Sure. I love how the snake was so bad nobody even noticed that the back center was like sideways Wait, giant yo, brick that's on That's its a good point. Face. What the fuck? <laughs> and it's standing straight up. That is a and good, it's that is angled. A good layout. And it's angled. Yeah, wait, and that's uh that's like one of the regular huge bricks, right? The giant bricks, yeah. So dude, that there's not much room that's safe I can back tell there you if it's it was angled like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because like essentially any way you're standing in there, someone is hitting you. Dude. Wow. That is uh, that's an atrocity. Oh, <laughs> All right. I'll I'll definitely have to uh throw that on screen for a view video watcher. So yeah, if you're listening to audio, go check it out. Cause uh Jesus Christ, that's a madman. Marv did some this? madman shit with his he, well, he threw did the, he did the, the up the upside down wedge. Yeah, bone. so he that did was... like two wedges and then a or two bricks and a wedge on top. Oh no! Just a no, little mad scientist. No. What was it? It was, it was what? No, it was With a wedge pin? and a pin on oh, one pin. side. Oh, pin! Yeah, With a brick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of duct tape hold that together. <laughs> a lot of duct tape. <laughs> NXL certified. NXL certified. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> Could, I mean, psh, good enough for me. Damn, well, this, sure. this layout might be our tryouts layout. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Good luck, kids. Never seen anything like this. Dude, if you can thrive in this snake, dude. You can thrive you anywhere. We're, we're picking you up. I yeah, and we I, call, we ended up... Our call ended up being the gulag for the snake on this one. <laughs> gulag, oh, yeah. Do dude. I get to come back if yeah. I win out of there? <laughs> The hard part is oh. getting in. That seems like the hard part is getting in. No I don't shit. Think you want in? I don't. Yeah, I think that's danger. <laughs> I think that the, the four beams in the middle, you're getting bounced no matter where you are inside of that. You got to look at it like the 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 standard way of paintball, where it's like, dude, if you're going fast, you're and there's paint not in the air, dude, you're going at a flash. If you go up to like that wedge in the middle, you know that slanted wedge in the middle, and you're just like quick flash across the gaps jump over the snake beam right into their side of the snake dude you're not even you're not even gonna be seen good luck Ash. You know, i mean that's all you've done but you that's all you <laughs> yeah you're not gonna be seen and then until they call you out and you just catch eight from the dude who's gonna trade out with you and then at that point brando's coming up right behind me <laughs> killing everybody you know because i'm just taking it all <laughs> jesus christ well, that's yeah, that's a know. nightmare. Uh, th thank you for for showing me that. That's um, amazing. We've spent way too much of the show already talking about it, but that's <laughs> that's how bad it is. If you're listening to audio, that's yeah. It it oh god, it elects that uh, conversation. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, okay. So Tom, may, yeah, Jason, may, let's great, just dude. get some stuff like that next year with the beams. Let's just make like 
I don't know, just the 50 have like the ultimate octagon. And it's like well, two men enter, one man leaves, you know? Oh, I like it's that. It's essentially ISO's ult from Valorant, just in, you know, in paintball. Nice, I think that'd be great. dude. Good reference. Good reference. I like that. I don't play Valorant um, too much anymore, but I do like that. I don't understand. <laughs> You're not a nerd, Brandon. It's okay. You're a doctor. You're a doctor over there. Oh my God. <laughs> He's not, not a, a fucking doctor. I don't know how he has his job. I don't get it. Right. Right, call back to an old show, but I don't get are it. Are you a gamer at all? I wish I could be more of a gamer than I am. Uh, I'll put it that way. I do play some, but just time has been uh, a little bit limited for me as of late. For sure. Well, so what would your poison be if you could play more? What would the poison be right now? Uh, the poison the right poison. now? Um, honestly, I've kind of been on that Virtua train a little bit okay yeah um i was i was gonna uh, pull this up at some point because i noticed you were in their discord and i noticed you've been playing that a little bit yeah man uh it's been it's been fun uh most of the time when i play i'm lucky enough to play with uh j rab and colts and a couple of those guys so it's been it's been a good time yeah so Damn. did you ever play infinite at all i did not no okay so <laughs> I, I hope he comes on next week because we're going to talk about it then. But uh, and, and I'm not I don't want to say his name just in case he doesn't come on. I'm not going to put pressure on him. But I had a team in Infinite with a couple of like the top guys in, in paintball and a couple of really good people. And we fucking ran train in that game to the point where they removed us and put us in our own classification. So <laughs> like fucking Infinite was great and fun. And then I jump over to Virtua Virtua is clunky, man. Virtua is it, it's it's a fun experience. Like I do have to say that, but man, they got some bugs they got to work out, especially when they're marketing themselves as like the ultimate paintball experience and uh, throwing a lot of shade around at other uh, paintball projects. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's it's a good start, but it's they they've got some work to do for sure. And I I think I played a couple games with. Uh, with Cole and I think Callie wasn't one of those two and just the networking was just rough man because like I think Colts in Texas Callie somewhere in the Midwest I think or something like that and then yeah me in California and it was just it's so many times you'd feel like you'd do something good and then only get you know instantly obliterated or the paint didn't register so it's just like oh I get to live again all right cool so I free life <laughs> It, yeah, uh, my favorite bug right now is like whenever the guns go up off break and nobody can shoot and we're like yep. oh, all 10 of us got to turn on to me on. so often where you're just like if you hit a second before like uh, even milliseconds before the buzzer goes off it'll count that gun pickup but it won't count it as letting you start to shoot so you'll have your gun up but you press down your trigger no no paint's gonna come out so then you have to reset hit qq again so it drops and comes back up so you can start shooting i think you could also reload to make it work but qq is the fastest one i found Th there's just bugs like that like little things like that that it's like ooh, guys we gotta we gotta fix that up before we uh release to a general public because they're not gonna be so nice as some of us are or at least trying to be that's a good point well, because yeah, I think I, I, I didn't get I didn't get I didn't get my hands on it yet, so that sounds sick though. I well, because yeah, I so I mean I I actually really want you guys to try it out because you guys have played Infinite, you've kind of tested both of them. Um, Virtua looks great; it looks pretty. Its features might be like really awesome, like some of the ranking stuff that they have in mind, and like you know the customization options. I sick, but. We got to work on core, but gameplay a little bit, boys. We, we got to tighten that up because if that's not fun, then all those other systems instantly become garbage because why, why would matter. you want to spend a lot of time, you know, on something that just doesn't feel good? You know, a feature for me that is obviously so, I don't really think it's that big of a deal, but for my simple mindedness, I just love the sign of leveling up, you know, just going from level 11 to 12, you know what I'm saying? Just little things like that. Yeah. Well, because it's, I love it's, that. It's a dopamine trick. The like grind, it, the it's, grind. It's meant to keep you hooked into the game. That's like where if you look at Call of Duty 2 versus like COD 4, one of the biggest thing they changed is 
they you know world of warcraft came out and they realized hey if you give players a goal or something to feel like they're doing they're going to spend way more time playing our game that's why the prestige system happened that's why you know getting to a certain level unlocked this you know gun and then this attachment like they definitely Camos. saw that and started to implement that and that's when you know call of duty franchise started taking off and just doing absolutely insane Mm-hmm. so there there is I something psychologically to you know having that goal to you know try to work towards or you know hey i get this super shiny object and i get to uh you know look cool in my lobbies mm-hmm. i mean uh, it's hard to, it's hard to even really say anything about virtua uh because i haven't played it but one thing that I, it does look like i see i feel like i see a lot of people <laughs> just doing the the run the run, shoot right but run left you know what i'm saying it's Does because the sense? whole switching hand mechanic just feels so horrible like i i really? can't say anything else because it's like instead of making it where your gun is just a centerized model and then depending on which like key you press you lean one way or lean the other way like do you know in, in you know infinite hatch you played it if you press q yeah. you lean left if you press press e you lean right yeah. in virtua instead of that you only have one button that leans you out whatever way your gun is so if it's in your left hand you go left if it's okay. in your right hand you go right minimize but the then, inputs but then no no you're adding more inputs because you have to switch between the two hands so if you want to if you're snapping out left you have to release snap switch to your other hand by pressing a key then hit that keystroke again to go out and snap the other way and if you do any of that before like it's done with the animation it'll bug out it'll whack out it'll like it just it just doesn't feel good like that's what i mean it's it's just clunky right now and it's a beta it's literally the first thing they put out yeah, into yeah. the public you know, so you, like you know they have time right now, Ryan? you know what you're reminding me of right now you remind me of cedar when he first started playing uh Dude, when he started playing in- <laughs> bro bro he would That's he would break right now he would break his keyboard bro if he would he, i guarantee it because even like sliding just doesn't work right now like sometimes you can get a slide to happen but i'm not even fully sure the buttons that it takes because it happens so rarely so most of the time i just dive then if you dive into a bunker you get stuck there and then you have to back up a little bit and then you can keep moving again cedar would break his keyboard i 100 percent believe that because he would not be able to do anything dude you you, re- you remind me of cedar right now because you got your taste at infinite and you're like the the Cause cause just, to be fair so the movement much is fluid. the movement is fluid to be fair right not even gonna lie the, the hand switch animation and everything now in infinite pretty solid um, getting out to the corner feels so good with like just that spoiled crouch and slide spoiled. Oh, a hundred percent. And now that I'm tasting like this gameplay, it's just, uh, it just Cedar, makes Cedar's me want to like, throw I could up. Do this shit. I could do this shit in real life. Why the fuck is it so hard in here? Yeah. And meanwhile, in infinite, I'm like, I mean, yeah, I could probably do a little better, but all right, you know, at least, Hey, I want to do that with my brain and then I can do it in game with Virtua. And I've played probably 20 hours now. I'm still at the point where it's like, I want to do that. Okay. I got to hit that key, that key. Okay. And then, okay. Now I could do it. And it's just like, it makes you delay everything because you're trying to think and ugh, it's it's not my preferred game at the moment we'll just say that i wonder how long it's going to take them to like uh get to that point where they're like you know what let's fully release it you know well so like their platform i mean yeah christian could jump into I, they the news they've released is q1 next year that's kind of their release window so you know up q1. until march that means until March of 2024, because that's when Q1 uh, ends. So sometime in that, four- they want to have an actual Steam release, console release, and a couple other uh, platforms, I think. That's a big thing that sets them aside, dude, uh, alone, is like the, the fact that they're going to put it on a console. If that actually yeah. happens, I'll be very impressed, because it's, okay. it's, it's a hard thing to do. It just is, because they, console developers, you know, Xbox and PlayStation, they just require more from a game for it to be on console versus Steam. Like, it, it's a lot easier to just make something in Unreal, throw it up on Steam. If, you know, if people buy it, they buy it. But it's it's definitely more of like, a you know, listing something on eBay versus like consoles is like okay. listing something on Amazon where it's like you just need more information. There's got to be more, I don't know, steps and stuff to do it. Huh. Okay. That's like the best metaphor I can come up with. That is so interesting. I gotta get my hands on that. 
yeah i mean jump into their discord I'll, I'll send you an invite and if anyone out there wants to try it out uh all you have to do is they have a official discord that's on you know their social medias um head over into that uh every couple of days it seems they drop out new codes i think it kind of is uh when steam gives them access to have more you know people try it um mm. yeah definitely check it out come play west coast servers because no one else is i'm like the only west coast player i think in the game right now so i always have to play on stupid ugly east coast servers with people and i just get shit on because it's god it's just not fun right now the the networking is definitely the thing that i think they need to work most on no no west coast teams just like the nxl exactly no man Dude, it's I think the it's east so coast crazy. bias it's crazy kind of talking about that because uh in the last episode when we had ethan on right he was saying how how hard it is when it comes to that like locking up and linking up with someone else's network you could he, be a point one second off and everything is different yeah well and he actually i the, the, jogged my memory he did go into some of the specifics and you know things that they're probably working on too right now um to try and figure out but it's it's not simple and that's why hey even fucking cod has you know lag issues and that's the triple a title of the world those you know like a, those guys have like a hundred person like per department I yeah assume, plus all the funding in the world so yeah i i virtua you know they I, I say these things out of constructive criticism because i really do want it to be good because i think that's awesome if it's good but uh yeah no it definitely definitely just needs some tender love and care at the moment i like what they're doing because every once in a while i'll see it on like facebook or something right it'll be like oh it'll be like a replica of madden but for paintball right it'll be like <laughs> oh nxl 2024 it'll show like a picture of ronnie on the front you know what i'm saying and it'll obviously be photoshopped and shit and it's like oh how cool would it be if this was actually a thing now we're actually getting to that point we a little bit two, yeah two I, I see what you mean yeah. developers that are kind of at that point where we have paintball video games yeah it's actually I, such a crazy concept to think about well, it, when was last done ryan you did a report on it right where it was yeah like it was uh it was 2011 i think was when the last one came out but the thing that was most interesting because so i put up some uh, gameplay of virtua and one of my facebook comments was talking about like why don't you just let some triple a studio do this <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker because they don't want to oh, do God. that because like no, none of them care about paintball like yes yeah, someone at call of duty at least knows the game because we keep getting brought up in like Warzone maps and shit like they always put in the air bunkers and everything but at yep, the end yep. of the day like yeah, fucking Epic Games doesn't want to make the next paintball game. So yeah, paintball's not big need... enough besides that one chunk of the map for, exactly. for, the, for them right now. Yeah, right? so you need someone within our sport, which is both Ethan with Infinite and Brett. Uh, uh, I think Remy is the name of the developer, but I know Brett Messer is doing the business stuff for them. And there's a couple other people that work under them. They're doing that with Virtua. So cool. Like, you know, we need people to kind of take that first step and take that action within our own sport if we want to see things like that in the world um and yeah i the other thing that's funny too and, and me and ethan have talked about this a little bit is like he he actually is also really excited for virtua because like sometimes he's like i wish you know that was in my game well all right now i need to go spend three months making that thing so it's in the game he's like it's kind of cool when you can just you know play someone else's game and just experience something and you know see what's up so yeah Keeps like clicking well that plus also you know i don't like there is that kind of you go back to just being a player and not have to you know oh, okay shit that felt wrong okay let me make a notepad oh, okay, and then gotcha, gotcha, uh, gotcha. oh they're complaining about that so I, i'm not even gonna play today i'll just go start working on this bug and like it just you know it's a different experience if that makes sense damn i fucking love video games bro <laughs> i know That's you do hash you of, elden lord tangent because i was i was literally like i was like christian if you could play one if you could play one game right now what would it be and he said virtual we just went on this fucking crazy tangent well because we're gamers bro games. we're both gamers at heart and yeah. that's why like yeah i don't know like it'd be dope if fucking someone from optic saw infinite and was like yo let's play this on stream and then all of a sudden everyone was playing it too like that'd be fucking sick uh will that happen no probably not so we need to push it there and like get it in front of people's faces and you know same with virtua the presentation looks great so yeah there's more of a chance that some random kid scrolling through uh steam next year is gonna be like oh virtual paper i'll try that out maybe that same kid ends up you know playing someday like that so is a things, thing that could happen 
I mean, sometimes me and my friends will be like, yo, we'll be like strolling through, like, yo, uh, why don't we all try this game? And we all buy a game and we all play it for like a week or something, you know, depending on how good the game is, right? That's true. Um, I was going to say Left 4 Dead 2, but we will keep playing that. It's just we're like going dude, that through game, That game cycles. is S tier, bro. That game <laughs> is so S tier. Dude, Did that run through. Okay? That game is great. That game is great. Not who who okay. said it was okay? What are you talking oh, about? I thought, I thought you said it was just okay. No, oh, no, I was saying the group that we ran through with the other night was really fun. Oh, we kind of had some poo-pooers, not even going live. Let me just say that. Well, we, we, get... we had some liabilities, but I don't think they've ever played Left 4 Dead in that way before. Nah, not. We play it very serious. Very serious. <laughs> not even serious. You just play on the highest difficulty, so you can't just send it through everything. Yeah. Ooh. You got to let me know. I, I, got, I got both Left 4 Deads. Those that they actually run on that laptop? Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. the only game Brandon could play. Let's go. No joke, dude. No, he can play Minecraft. I know he for can a play yeah. Infinite he can play too. Minecraft. He he can play Infinite. Infinite. It will run. That's about it. That's what this Good caps enough off for at. me. Good, Good enough. enough. <laughs> That's yeah. It's like three pretty uh, S tier games right there. I agree. Minecraft and Minecraft alone. All right, Christian. Let's get back to you real quick. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that, Ash? <laughs> All right, so, uh, this, so this is this is just one quick question that I just got for you about kind of rounding back towards paintball. Is what is like a paintball hot take? What is your most unpopular opinion about paintball that might be you know a little little controversial in the world? Um, so I think that, and it has to do with refing. Uh, I know okay. there's there's definitely some some uh, conversations about refing that go on here. So For sure, definitely. Uh, I think that and a uh, little known fact, I actually am an NXL certified ref as well. I I took the Andrew House class at the start of the year. He came to X Factor. Let's go uh, right now. Out. Knowing what I know, like the biggest thing that could fix refing is if. Uh, especially on the divisional fields is if all you really need is lay down refs on Very the true. snake and the Dorito. If you have lay down refs on both of those sides, you fix probably 75% of refing issues because those guys are in they position to see everything. And yeah. they have such a fast reaction to it as well. And this, this is why they dedicate dudes in those positions on the pro field. And you'll see you guys laying there. They really do have a lot of times like when you're filming where you see one of those guys get up to go see something because they have that close up inside angle that a sideline ref just can't fully see, you know, just by themselves. And that's just, that's the bad part about when it kind of trickles down into the uh, the more divisional side is obviously the struggle to find refs. It always it, like dude, not even a lot. Sometimes refing paintball sucks, dude. You're getting toasted. Um, but you know, sometimes some fields don't have enough refs to where they're just like, all right, we're going to have, uh, four along the sidelines and that's it. And, and yeah. that's really the main issue is there's just not enough refs in the game period. Like you need more refs than you need players, players. on the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need, we need, we need like Kevlar vests underneath those ref jerseys, bro. <laughs> some, some of those hit, sometimes I'd be getting hit and I'm like, damn dude, do I even want a ref anymore? Got to take the pain out of the equation. Um, no, and I think that 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 is a very valid opinion because I think that's why we see, you know, pro field. I mean, is it 12, 13 They're guys 14. out there? 14 out there. And then House in his tower. So he also has a completely, you know, different angle. He's looking at everything too. Um, and they still miss things. Yeah. No, 100%. And like we saw with the pink paint on Ghost Sports, there was still, you know, those sprays that it's, it's a, it's, you know, 50 milliseconds. That's all it's in the air. Someone blinked during that time. Like, that unfortunately just happens. Like, you know, and it's... I'm not even gonna lie, that's happened to me while refing, dude. I'll be, yeah. I'll be staring over a guy. I'll be staring over a guy. Then all of a sudden, I blink, and he has a loader hit. And I'm like, whoa, what? I was like, yo, get out, really? buddy. Uh, try yeah. to keep your eyes open just so you won't miss you know, anything. You just, just don't miss it, because in a game of... In a game of fraction timing and little things like that, because sometimes... Just like the normal rules, if the ref sees a break off, dude, you're out. And I hate when I'm the ref where it's like, oh, get out. They're like, where am I hit at? I'm like, I saw it spray off. Because everybody kind of knows that's kind of like the refs get out of jail free card, right? Realistically, you know. So 
So that's that's a I'd say an average take. But if you want a hot take as far as refing goes. Um, All right. So in the rules and I feel like so lay down ref solve 75 percent. 24% of issues are going to be solved if players just realize that in the rule book it says it's the player's responsibility to know when they've gotten hit. Brandon's and, read that section. Oh yeah. He's nodding violently. <laughs> and if you get hit, it is your job to realize it and get out. I it, like the whole and I think part of it is just it wasn't real clear whenever they transitioned away from like the obvious unobvious hit to the wording mm -hmm. that it is now. Uh but if you get hit, it is your job to realize it. It's not a ref's job to go tell you you're hit and then pull you out. No, it is your job to get out. And if you don't, then you get a penalty and you deserve it. Mm. And I think that, that is a good that's a good take. I like I like that a lot. That's a good take. And I think that also can get confusing too with some of the lower divisional players because sometimes, you know, they they don't know the concept of a loader hit that they can't see. So it's kind of like they don't understand why they're being called out. But you know. I will say refs in those divisions usually give a little more leeway for stuff like that as kind of they should. But then when you step up next year to D3 or, you know, you're making that ladder up, well, now it's going to get a lot stricter as, you know, it definitely should. The competition's getting higher. The rule book definitely needs to be played more by the letter instead of kind of a, you know, a teaching mindset or a, or a helping players develop and grow mindset. We got we to gotta reframe that overshooting rule, bro. We got to really reframe that one. Don't play pro, Hatch. That's, I've told you a thousand yeah, times. Gotta, There's gotta, no gotta, rule up that. there. I'm trying to that, that, that rule only applies to you, Hatch. <laughs> I, I've never been warned. Actually, you've been warned on my behalf. On Brit, yes, so, we, we have seen that. Yeah. I'm just like, I was like, me? He's talking to me? I didn't even shoot the guy. Dude, look but, in your camera right now, Hatch, and just... just that's why you're called because you have a recognizable look you're a dude with a mullet that's down to his shoulders and puka shells on yeah it also oh and your help. mask is cosplayed painted yep. as master yep. chief like you know, you're the most recognizable paintball player bro oh my god i hi i wish michelle sent me the photo she's she um she saved this picture of like a like a christmas ornament of uh, she thought it was a paintball mask you go, oh, look, look, someone made a paintball mask uh, ornament. Would that be cool to have? And I look, I'm like, that's Master Chief's helmet. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> she's, oh. She's hung oh, out okay. around hats too much, man. Oh, yeah. that's fucking hilarious. Because that's that crazy. great. Because uh, at least, you know, for me, every time, even before I had, like, you know, the whole Master Chief mask and all that, uh, everybody was always like, oh, dude, that looks just like Halo. Every single time I went, like, you would talk to, like, a newer person, they'd always be like, oh, dude, it looks like, it looks like Halo. Like, oh, dude, you, you, the We've color... had this argument before. You're the only person who thought that the whole time, but it, it worked out, okay? And Seriously, Paul made you a dope mask. You, you've never had other people talk to you about that? No. Well, damn, I yeah, actually... Didn't you know? Cool. I found Halo, that he's a cool guy, and he doesn't afraid of anything. Yeah, Exactly. Uh, I guess I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think I think you're more so talking about like the mask look, and I think that really only I'm came in with like KLRs. Well, I'm also talking oh, about the mask look as well. No, I I thought you meant like your big muscles and everything too. No, nah, my yeah 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 underneath my uh, uniform. Hatch the amount of memes I've <laughs> yes. wanted to send you recently of being like send this to all your friends under five eight and uh, you know hope Santa. Uh, have fun with you for helping oh, out in the oh, North Pole. I am 5'8". I am 5'8". Yeah, that's yeah, the point I'm making. Tongue. I'm like 5'8". Watch eight, your tongue, Ryan. Like seven. Yeah. Okay, fine. you going back to the North Pole? Isn't that your time of year, Brandon? This is about the time that you get all on your right, plane. Whatever. And... Go, go get your head on something. All right. Go, go, go. I walk do that daily. Really I high. do it daily. Yeah. yeah. But you at know, least you know I... who doesn't do it. Us, us shorties. Hey, right? hey, Brandon. Yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Brandon, I'll be there when Michelle needs someone to get something from the top shelf. Don't worry. I'll come Brand over. I'll help Brando, out. Damn. At least Brando can change in the U-Haul still standing up. Ooh. Ryan, have fun mm -hmm. playing the snake by yourself next it. year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Bitch, I do not get in there. What do you, what do you think this is? <laughs> it has been a long time since my buds. But actually, I will say, I'm just like, you know, like, I shout out Doss because I think he represents us well. Tall guys can get small when we have to. Bro, I, I danced Doss, for Tyler years. I, I can get down to the snake and I can get on my knees. I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to be comfortable, but I could do it for a couple minutes trying to get the job done.
that's all that needs to be done dude if job accomplished you're good yeah and then after the point you literally have to use your gun to stand back up because your knees yeah. are locked but hey the, you did it the alex frazier you know walking back to your pits <laughs> pretty much yeah oh man dude no i god damn it hatch and halo that's that's up there as one of your favorite games it has to be for sure I'm not so this is got this is this is uh Are you literally I'm, wearing I'm the Halo old. shirt tonight? I just realized that too. Oh dude, I yeah, God, I didn't dude. even notice that. <laughs> Damn, dude. Okay. You did that on purpose. Good eye, good eye. I didn't even notice that, no joke until just now. <laughs> um but uh sometimes I'll be sitting in my room late at night. Obviously it's dark, and I'll have my headphones <laughs> on and okay. I'm just like shuffling through my, my playlist, and every once in a while, like the Halo theme song will come on, and I'm just like, Damn, dude. I feel you like you tear I, up almost you you tear like, up you tear up it's it's like uh that scene from ratatouille where he takes the bite into the ratatouille and he z- and just zoinks <laughs> out into, a, into when he was a kid that's kind of what it reminds have me have you of. seen all of those with the gta 6 stuff that's come out where it's like you yeah. playing gta 5 Dude, you getting gta 6 GT, gta 6 bro what don't even get me fucking started on that one well i, I okay here here excited, i'm gonna bro. i'm gonna i'm gonna shut you down because I have one more question that I want to ask Christian, and then I think we can jump into random, you know, GTA talk absolutely, and all that stuff for the rest of the night. We do have a very uh, important and pressing question. This is becoming uh, quickly a a reoccurring uh, part of the show. Uh, it was sent to us by our favorite uh, Austin resident. Um, stay looked out down there, Lastro. Stay, stay safe, man. Austin's kind of scary, uh, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. we have to ask. You're putting together a D5 team. Uh, could be your favorite team. Could be the most competitive team. Could be the funniest team that you can put together. But it's anyone. It can be a fictional character. It can be freaking a transformer. It can be whatever actor you want. Uh, whatever Megatron. person you want. So, Christian, who are the five people that you're putting on that D5 line? And who is your pod runner? Well, I came locked and loaded for this. I knew question. you did, that's so that's why I had to ask it. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out to Scott Lopez, best hair in the game. God, I love that guy. Ooh, ooh. Second Bro. best hair in the game. Actually, okay. mm, I, I also got to put my my boy Cooper Harrison up there as well. Uh, I think he's okay. like twelve years old. Plays out oh, of TKO. Dude. You know hey, him? Yeah, Coop, Mohawk. Coop beat oh. me in overtime to win a Mech X Ball tournament. All right, I'm not a fan of Cooper. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've also beat Coop in a one-on-one to win a point in the back X ball. It's a whole thing. Shout out Coop. Cooper has a thing of winning one-on-ones. He actually in the joust. He went on a, I think, a seven-point streak at the end of the match to Dude. to win it for. No, us. that's what I'm Beast. saying. Like people who don't realize that. No, he's a savage. It wasn't that I sucked at paintball. He's no, he's very good. For sure, he's, he's one right. of those like kids who are coming up next. Like you know that next generation. All right, mm-hmm. so for mine, I felt like I had to I had to put a Texas All Stars list here. So everybody That's here is, was born in, or from the state of Texas. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna start off with the center specialist. Not necessarily calling him a three, but he's he's my up the middle guy, uh, Tim Duncan, because I, I feel like he's <laughs> okay. he's gonna be the guy. He's gonna go run their center guy down, give him twenty, and not say a word, not flinch as he's <laughs> coming off. Walk the back field. to the pit. Yep. All right. Intimidator. That's who you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, So for my Dorito one, I've got Nolan Ryan, one of the greatest baseball pitchers of all time. That's a good one. Okay. Behind. I mean, dude, as the one, he's a pretty tall guy. Uh, That's why I I don't know. Okay, okay. This is my snake guy, so. All right, all right. So behind him, as my two on the Dorito side, I got George W. Bush. That's a good one, too. I will give you that. They're going to play great together. 100%. Hundred percent. Uh, George, he, he may mess up some of the calls, but he's gonna be a damn fine player. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna play his heart out, <laughs> and worst case scenario, he'll just call in reinforcements. Man, uh, you're 100%. never gonna actually lose a point. So, as my two on the snake side, I've got Texas legend Colt McCoy, Quarter, uh, quarterback yep. for the uh, Texas Longhorns. Oh uh, yes, back okay. Two thousand nine. Okay, yeah, yes. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming back together. I was like, what? Colt gotcha, McCoy. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then as I, my, I don't uh, watch UT football. <laughs> God damn it! No, I'm a big UT football guy. 
So as my uh, my one on the snake side, I, I was thinking like, let's see, who's the superstar diva from the state of Texas? I had to go with Beyonce herself is uh, making the appearance <laughs> in the snake one. Queen B. All right. Star power there. And then uh, for my pod runner, I've got Mr. All right, all right, all right himself, Matthew McConaughey. That's Matthew McConaughey. Good pick. That's a good that pick. A yep. good one. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's going to show up. He'll he'll bring the you know motivation and kind of up morale up and everyone the pits are going to be a great vibe it's going to be it's going to be great no, i like I that agree. he is crack he is cracking jokes like while the players are walking out he's cracking jokes while they're coming in he is unstoppable <laughs> he's cracking jokes according to hedge um I agree. no that's that's a beautiful texas list i think you really you did you did your state proud there with that one Oh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely others deserving. Honorable mention uh, goes to uh, Owen Wilson. Uh, it was between oh, okay. Owen Wilson I did, and George I didn't know W. He Bush was from, on the okay. side. All right. Is Joe Exotic from Texas? No. Uh, that I don't know. I don't think so. I got to Google that. Where is... <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's locked Joe up Exotic. in Oklahoma right now, so I know that. I just want to know where he's from. I like that W. Oh, that he's w from Kansas. Pick. Brandon, have God you been you've it. been writing down all of our guest answers on this, right? I have. Okay, I got good. Because I think that would be amazing to have like at the end of the year a tournament where people vote on the best D five lineup. Oh, that's gonna be a March Madness thing, hundred percent. Yep. That boom. There good. we go. This is why you're here, Christian. You're giving us content ideas, <laughs> and we're gonna good. steal them. This is content. Good. Well, perfect, man. Now, maybe that'll be a collaboration we'll have to do together. We'll do like a drawing show and seed all of them, and then yeah, get oh, uh, get into dude. it. Well, let's. let's uh, all right. Well, we D five got that out of the way. That was hell yeah. Appreciate that. Love your commitment to the show. Um, let's move to. I guess there there are a couple paintball things I want to talk about. There's a couple moves that have happened this week. Hatch is. He's so ecstatic about one. It's uh, it's his favorite move that's probably ever happened to the game of paintball. Are you uh, talking about that meme that I that, that I posted? no 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 oh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking gotcha, about real okay. life. And in real life, uh, Michael Urena MJU has moved over to Impact. This is a little bit older news now, but first time we've had the chance to talk about it on the podcast. I mean, Christian, first thoughts about that? What's what's going on there? MJU's uh, you know he's kind of going his own way. So uh, working for Archie Montemayor and Ryan Brand over at Project, I actually get a little bit more insight as to kind of like what moves are on the horizon and the motivations mm -hmm. behind that. So Mike Urena, he's an absolute stud. Also currently living in Houston, by the way. So uh, I knew, Texas I knew is going to claim him. Um, so Hatch, you're literally Mike, a stalker, bro. You're his biggest fan. We all know. I was, I was like, I was like, I thought he moved to Texas, but so I mean, with Impact losing, Axel got in. They need another stud in the snake and Mike Urena, like, yeah, he's a stud, but he's also kind of on, you know, the second or third string on dynasty right now. So he's, mm -hmm. you know, that's a place for him to go truly shine. And uh, I'm sure there's some financial uh, raises there as well, going to impact. So financial raises as well. And this is something that I don't think a lot of people are putting together. Mike's already played under a Dave Baines organization before he played on a DMG lineup that was with the Dave Baines when he was playing a lot more kind of closer as the owner for those guys. Um, and so I think that's also going into it too. This is kind of a territory for him that he's already spent time at Capital Edge, you know, done that kind of grind. And that may be something that's a little not I don't want to say comfortable for him, but it's at least, you know, if he is going to go to a new squad, it's one that there's already some familiar water and territories there for sure. And now I'm just imagining if you're a team and you're playing up against impact and you see Mike Arena and Trevor Reese are on the field at the same time, you just know you're going to get bonus balled on the way out. It's just yeah, gonna exactly. Add in Tyler Panaleo on that, on that D side. And you know, that's a freaking aggressive line. Um, shout out to Tyler. Cause really, I think he's grown so much this year. And I think a lot of people have realized the player that uh, he can become in the league. I, I think he's still a little green. I mean, Dude, he started playing paintball in 2017, man. Like, you know, it's he still has some things to learn, but he's uh, an amazing athlete and, uh, you know, he can really pick up things quick. So excited to see how he develops this next year as well. And look at it. Like, he literally came off a knee injury and literally is now st was starting at the World Cup Finals with Impact. Dude, what a bounce. What a huge, like, what a topsy-turvy year for him. Seriously, he went, went, huge move to Impact, gets hurt then comes back and starts. I'm so crazy. Oh, I love that shit. <laughs> oh, Tyler. Shout out I, to Ty. I, I filmed Tyler when he was playing three man. So I think that should just tell you everything. Like it freaking, you know, that his story is, is definitely, uh, 
sped up in the game where it's been at a you know very uh can't think of the proper word but a very fast tracked uh you know to where he is today and uh yeah no i'm i'm interested to see how that impact squad is going to do next year i also think they got rid of a player that i don't know if he was the best positive for the team there was definitely moments when i was around their pits where i feel like there was negative energy kind of circling around this area and that was fuzzy and matt jackson i think there was questions at times if he was a guy who was going to stick to his job versus go out and try to make a play happen with 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 a dave baines coach line doing your job is always probably going to be better uh i you know i i would trust into him and do what he wants to do so maybe maybe that was something that was starting to cause tension there i mean i i don't fully know but that's kind of my speculation from the outside uh, and he is going, you know, down to you. You're you're going to pick him up probably a little more, spend some more time around him. So that'll be interesting to see how he goes in with the X Factor line. What's uh, what's your thoughts on that trade as well? Uh, well, we're just gradually picking up more and more pieces of the AC Dallas of old. <laughs> yep. uh, you know, we got TJ Danner. He's been an absolute stud for X Factor. And uh, I've throughout this year, I've actually done uh, some filming at practices for X factor and keeping some stats for them to use like breakouts and things like that uh, for their practices. So I've gotten to spend a lot of time with the X factor guys this year. Uh, I'm very excited for uh, fuzzy coming over. Uh, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now with, with Matt and TJ on at X factor, are we going to see his brother oh. come out of retirement? I'm going to see John. Uh, that, that's I. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll doubt it. I, I think John's a uh, couple years, couple years removed, and also he's. Uh, I think he just had a a kid not too long ago, like within the last year or two. So um, well, he's still kind of locked up on that a little bit, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I don't. I don't know about John, but uh, yeah, we'll see. X Factor is probably not done making moves if i had to guess which i i don't know very much on on this like yeah i'm i'm close with ryan and archie but you know this this is pure speculation for me so disclaimer there if i i if i had to guess they're probably going to make another move uh before the season the off season's over so that's a hard fact who do you think <laughs> so uh, in the pits is <laughs> confirming <laughs> that there will be another Chip. move for x factor this off season who do you think it's going right, to be who do I think it's going to be? Oh, that's a that's a very good question. I mean, I there's a lot of people hide from diesel. No, I can tell you it's not that. Uh, really? OK, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Um, but my favorite is like when like Let's Talk Paintball or Iconic there, they make these posts and it's like rumors. It's like this team uh -huh. is looking to hold on to their good players and also pick up other good players. I'm like, is that really news? Like, is it a slow <laughs> news week? Like, Isn't that just what teams do in the off season? Like that'd be like saying this NFL GM is looking to trade up for a better draft pick. It's like, exactly. What? It's like the Russians oh, okay. are looking to hold on to their good players and also put more good players on their teams. Like you could have put literally any of the 20 teams instead, <laughs> like instead of the Russians and it would have been the exact same post. What do you mean? Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. It's true. kind of saying nothing in a lot of words. I mean, it's, you got to get the content flowing, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, there has for, been for, some. I mean, I guess the other piece of news that came out this week for like an actual trade is uh, Frank Anna Tommaso heading back to Revo. Um, seems like this Brooklyn Bears experiment isn't working out. Um, there's some rumors I've kind of been hearing in the background. But just yeah, stuff that we've seen publicly in the open. Chris Caputo has decided to leave the team. Uh, Frank has now decided to go back to his old organization with Revo. Um, so it's, yeah, it seems like there's more turbulence going on there. I, I don't know if the moves are done from that team yet, Brooklyn Bears. I, I think we'll maybe see some more turbulence there as this offseason progresses. I think there are going to be moves from, uh, definitely from Revo for sure. Uh, I think what already a couple of them happened where uh it was a henry sends left to go to the ironman is that am i remembering that correctly i don't know if i've heard that one publicly so breaking, breaking news maybe i thought i read that on uh on the uh i think iconics tracker okay uh mm -hmm. I, again i i mean i may have right missed now. it um, but the only one that I've heard confirmed with Revo was the Frank moving back. Uh, it doesn't surprise me because I do know some of those guys were kind of 
there there was stuff flying around and you know the behind the scenes of revo might be trying to make some moves this off season um but yeah i haven't i haven't heard that one for sure Damn, that was wild. Yeah, I definitely heard a rumor there where uh, some I I thought it was Henry Sens. I could be wrong, but definitely some, the Ironmen are going to pick up some pretty mid to upper tier names from someone I know within the die organization. I have heard from similar things. I have not heard any for like particular names, but I've I've heard similar kind of that we want to make some yeah. moves. We want to make some investment and try to really bring this franchise back. That's kind right, of actually, the messaging. Yeah, now that I think about it, I think I heard it on Spick and Span. Oh, okay, so that's it. That could be completely true, or it could be completely false. It literally could be one or the other. Like there is, right? It's fifty fifty. <laughs> Damn, yeah, it should be an interesting off season for sure. I want to see what happens with Notorious. Um, you know, them their kind of three year agreement. Uh, came to an end with their coach Ryan Gray, who's now a Diesel. Uh, it's going to be uh, a Texas Storm reunion uh, for anybody who knows the name Texas Storm. Uh, yeah, we we actually Mark talked about that a couple weeks ago when we mentioned the Ryan Gray. Like it's it is kind of crazy that that name just kind of uh, Texas paintball is built by those men and I, yeah, I it, for sure it's crazy. Like it's just it's that legacy in that game over there it definitely goes back a long way. Oh yeah, Mark and Clint Johnson reuniting with Ryan there should be good. Uh, I'm the thing that I'm most kind of curious slash worried about for the sake of Austin Notorious is Archie Barnes. Like I'm especially with Mike Arena leaving Dynasty, that kind of leaves a snake hole to be filled. And Archie is local California to them, so that he's you know, yeah no he's our boy too. We see him at practices and stuff every now and then. He'll pop up to Capital Edge to get Archie. you know some practice in. Um, I Archie's always one of those guys I wish good things for. I mean, I I remember the first couple times I was seeing him was with that semi uh, semi pro ex, uh, excessive line from a couple of years ago. Uh, but he's definitely kind of I think shined on most of the teams that he's had a chance to be on. And uh, when you're that fast, it's hard to like not pay attention to that guy. You know, <laughs> he just the guy yeah. is making moves. No, and and he's he he shows that fearless snake one. You know, I'm gonna be in your side of the snake, and I do not give a shit, and I'll do it every single point if I have to. And, you know, from a pro team, that's that's kind of what they're looking for in that young attacker. So, I, yeah, I, well, I have to have feel to someone to like needs to compete. ask. Or, well, yes, but I was just going to say, I feel like at some point this offseason, someone's going to ask him, you know, and, and it may be Dynasty, it may be another team, but I could I could just see kind of someone trying to pick him up from that notorious bundle right now. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I... Uh several players on notorious i was actually playing d4 with them back in 2020 uh jared sherman paul hubert and renee rodriguez so uh yeah really That's close with a lot of those guys i root for them yeah it's it's insane how fast they made the climb once they actually jumped to d2 mm -hmm. Well, I mean, and that's when it's like fueled, like fueled by fire, you know, skin of their teeth. They got in. It definitely is one of those stories that's, you know, just absolutely insane, too, which definitely I think, you know, I, I think they were obviously ready for it. They were in the position for that to happen. But that definitely also kind of expedited their. All right. We're fucking, you know, we, we did really good a cup. Now we're going to fucking pro. All right. Let's fucking send this. Mm. which uh, there's one thing I want to clear up with that. A lot of people say that it's because of double points that they got the pro spot that year. I actually went back and did the math with, um, without the double points, like using the old system. So the thing was, if you, if cup wasn't double points, they still would have gotten it mm -hmm. because they would have been, I think they were, they finished one point ahead of fit. But if it wasn't double points, it would have been tied with fit, I believe. But ties go to whoever finishes higher at cup. Mm -hmm. So they would have gotten Ooh. it anyway. And the yeah. only way they wouldn't have gotten it is like if they had counted, I think, all of the minors that year as well. And I think In they were only case, taking one minor. Yeah, they take you whichever one you do the best at. Yeah, it is like... In which case, if they accounted every event, then fit would have gotten it last, mm -hmm. that year. Mm, but I think that goes to show, and the point you're trying to make is that consistency. Like it wasn't just one mm -hmm. event. Like they were in the conversation enough times and at a high enough level that that one event pushed them over the edge. That and then top five every time. Yeah, and then yeah. all right, well shit. Now we all right, we're fucking up in pro. Okay, let's go fight really hard paintball players. And For the sure. thing is, they've won matches, right? It's 
in et if you if you can win a match in pro dude you without a doubt deserve to be there for sure and well it was shit is insane it was funny i mean i was uh i saw an optic podcast they were talking about this because cdl is starting to come back and cod's in its hype period and everything right now but they were yeah. talking about like look some people see the bottom team in cdl which is like you know the nxl pro league for call of duty and they're like god damn these guys are getting shit on they suck and Scump instantly makes, and you know, Scump's one of the best players to ever play the game. He instantly defends them and says, yeah, but they would fucking spawn camp you and your best friends all day fucking long because that's the truth. Cause like just For being sure. in that conversation, you are already better than so many people below you. And in paintball, that definitely is, you know, that's a part of the conversation. Like just, just getting to be one of those 20 teams is a hard feat to do. And then the mountain gets exponentially harder the second you enter into that. So it's, yeah. Once you get to the top five, it's another fucking mountain with, behind that. With the caveat of the Saints this year, I do genuinely believe that any division two or any division two and up team could like have uh, favorable odds of beating the Saints. Of course. And that's also, I think, how that Saints organization came to be, because that's, yeah, there was, you know, just a lot of messy turnover with that. I, that wasn't the line that was supposed to be originally. And, you know, there was a lot of craziness that happened. And so it ended up being just kind of, you know, some divisional kids who probably weren't fully ready to compete in that. But in a similar situation, that's what we're going to see with PB Fit. We're going to see those same kids who were brought up to, hey, this AC Dallas line needs players. Do you, okay, you guys can come in and, and play for that spot because you're, you know, the best team around this area or whatever's going on. And all right, yeah, you're making shit on, but now you can use that experience when you get an opportunity to go back up to the league, which is, you know, what's happening this year. And we'll see, you know, do they compete? Do they not? I, you know, we don't know yet. It's going to be one of those things. First event, it'll start to tell you that story of are they on par? Are they on level? Or do they need to work more? Is there, you know, more homework and more studying they need to do? I think they'll be fine, realistically. I think people yeah. will do well. Yeah, I, I think they'll be fine, but at the same time, I, it, it's hard. I mean... Without a doubt. Yeah. Fucking... I, it, it just... Watching the struggles of DMG for years, and also at the same time realizing those are some of the best paintball players I know, it definitely illustrates the picture of, of how difficult it is to go beat the 40-year-olds on Dynasty who've been doing it their whole life. Because for some reason, they can still do it at the top level. The paintball marker is the greatest equalizer, my friend, you know, to where at that point, it's not like his ball is going to shoot a little bit faster than mine, you know, or like exponentially faster than mine. Obviously, you know, with the chrono, like. That was like a little FPS, bit faster. But, I mean, if he twists his barrel, it might, but. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying, right? It's not, <laughs> no, I got it's you. It's not yeah. like, it's not like any paintball marker shoots like, better than a, than a pro's paintball Well, I was going to say, it's not like, you know, like Formula One where like, you know, you're going to show up to the field with, you know whatever marker you have but there's no cap on what your marker could be so someone shows up with some like 600 feet per second freaking dead on sniper that they've spent millions of dollars developing you know shit like that can't happen like it's all going the same speed it's the same projectile you know yes it may be different manufacturers and stuff like that but it's to the same standard go play like you know it's it, you're really going to test who has a better kind of strategical mind and then who can make the best plays in the moment you know and that's really what the sport does it, it definitely you know it doesn't matter uh what your 40 time is all the time sometimes it helps also, but not also, always you see a lot of different like marker companies at the top right you've seen damage win and they shoot they shoot dlx right you've seen dynasty win and they shoot field one force right we've yeah. seen impact when they shoot planet, planet eclipse, eclipse. Like, yeah we've seen we've seen every every bit of everything at the top i think it's realistically the marksman you know yeah does that make sense it's the photographer Hello. not the camera you can say this about Hello. any profession in life it's yeah caveat to that look how many tournaments have won dynasty have won since the force has come out it's I, insane dude, i have thought about that one it's a lot actually true. i have thought about that one is a lot it, it it and they say it as a marketing term but it's really the truth i've seen some of the paint that they shoot it is so fucking brittle but it doesn't break in their gun and i whatever engine they took from bob just they fixed and made better and it does it really doesn't break paint like i it, 
I don't know what it does. It it just doesn't. And uh, I mean, it's also. I mean, these it's been like that forever. Like, dude, ever since I first got in the game, and I ever since I first tried like shooting a G six R, I was like, damn, this thing is buttery because it just mm-hmm. shot. It just shot like nothing else like that I've ever felt. So I definitely see why the field one force is, has its popularity for sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, I mean, they. Yeah. Great markers. Yeah, they've won eight tournaments in the last three years since the force has come out. <laughs> yeah, it's so badass. And I, you know, and I think it is also like essentially most markers. I mean, your top end marker from X dealer is going to be pretty much, you know, the same. It's going to be a spool valve gun. It's going to have one tube. It's going to use a nine volt. Like we've gone away from the days where, you know, if you're using an angel, it looks like this. If you're using, you know, a Bob long, it looks like a brick. If you're using a planet, it's got two tubes. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like everything is now so much closer to almost identical across the manufacturers it's just how they set them up and how they build them um so it's it's really minuscule changes but they seem to make the right ones with you know their platform and the way that they built it paintball's only on the up honestly and i feel like well you've almost hit a plateau to where it's like how can you really make a marker you know like what 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 would the next crazy different marker be like Oh, we've you know? 100% hit a plateau already because really, so I mean, what? Plateau like 2015. What, yeah, well, eh, th- yes and no, because I think we were still going away from macro lines and shit like that that you would see in the markers. But like, dude, a 180R is a fucking fire paintball gun. If that was made in 2015, that would be the top of the line marker. And that's like the mid range small boy doesn't have all the best features today. And it's like, yeah, so it gets to the point where, okay, we have that, the DSR versus, you know, the M3 and stuff. It's like, even the mid-range marker is a really good, reliable, shoots 10.5, will shoot it nicely, will give you eight, nine pods. Like, these are all things that, you know, back in the day, you had to work hard or mod your marker or get the right one to, to actually achieve. And I feel like people will just be like, you know what? I'll just buy a marker that was top of the line five years ago for like six hundred dollars off you know it's the the price for paintball guns has, has changed so much over the past year like like with the whole thing with like the geo3 right people are just buying up the geo 3s right now like crazy well that's because, because they're now they're becoming nostalgic ones. too so it's kind of like a, is a lot you know you can't get well the shot now. but also it's like they don't make them anymore or you know like if if you find a clean example it's because it was maintained well like it's it's becoming a history piece as well as also still being a really good functioning marker Mm-hmm. so uh, it's crazy that i mean now all the now all the markers from five years ago are still able to keep up with the markers now it's not like they're uh i mean we shoot 10 balls per second it's not like you know this gun can shoot 25 and this one can only shoot 22 it's not like that's mattering too much yeah or or even like you know freaking in some of the early days like you would you would get not because they were they would have to use co2 but when we first went to hpa you wouldn't get like a whole 12 pods from a loader or you know from a co you know for a co2 hba bottle so it's like you know efficiency and stuff like that now all markers are really going to give you you know enough that you can shoot through your whole pod pack and not have to worry about it as long as you fill up and actually remember to fill up your marker i mean Very just true. to give a, a frame of reference on what five years ago so four years ago in november was the debut of the cs2 pro yeah. cs2 pro came mm-hmm. out four years Damn. ago that is that's what, that's what I'm shooting right now. Yeah, I'm so that is a, a CS2. And if you go from a an 07 DM to a, a 2011 DM, that same kind of four year period, like those are completely different markers. <laughs> those yeah, are very, yeah, very true. Damn, CS2 Pro four years ago. That is so, that, that is crazy to think about. Well, the CS3 was already so old before last year. It was World Cup last year at this point. Mm-hmm. Damn, dude. Time flies surprised when you're in paintball, bro. I'm surprised there's no like CS 3.1 yet. You know what I'm saying? With like a quarter of a quarter of a quarter of a millimeter shaved off. You know, with, like, we're gonna start some, doing some that. We're, we're gonna get the 3.1, the, two, uh, four. Yeah, look at the Project G3 or the the new infamous CS3. Like those. That's basically it at this point. But yeah, well, and it is kind of cool. We're getting some custom build options again. You know, like back back in the day. Uh, you know, like a freaking like uh warp sports you know some of the dark uh, label stuff that they would do for different markers like 
it just made you know a really cool creative piece as well as being a dope looking marker and you know we're seeing that with twisters now like they're still really doing a lot on the series i think they just released the cs3 twister um, i know some people are getting excited about a drop on that uh stuff that project is doing they're you know releasing all these custom markers dude they're some of those are just absolutely beautiful I the give, anodizing I in the building looks you know like me that's the hard part just picking something for that that wouldn't okay, that would match you, my style you know i have that's no clue what you're trying to interject your hash know, but dude, i'm know. gonna finish my point in saying that you know it, it's cool to see this creativity come back into individualized like 10 of 10 pieces you know instead of we're making you know a custom building that's going to be for a thousand markers it's now okay we're gonna custom ano custom mill there's gonna be five of them but those five are gonna be some of the best looking markers you know that are made on this platform i'm gonna see if i can send you all a picture on this but we just finished a uh so project also has kind of a, a offshoot called technique anodizing which is also ryan and archie so we anodize our own stuff and here i'm gonna send this picture but we just finished this gun not too long ago let's see if it will send in here for my phone there we go Ooh. So, okay okay that looks were, that looks sick yeah we had that was one of several that we had at uh at cup in the booth but it's been it's been fun to work on it's also kind of a pain in the ass process but uh yeah so are you yeah. learning what, what how to anodize a pain in the ass like for the people who, who i because i have no idea how anodizing works tell me what makes that a pain in the ass okay so the whole process so first you have to I uh, completely take the marker apart. So like all yep. everything all screws, that's not everything. aluminum. So screws, O-rings, wires, everything needs mm -hmm. to be taken apart. Uh, then you have to strip the old color off. Um, and once you strip the old color off, if you're doing, depending on the finish, so if you're doing a matte finish or a polish finish, uh, if you do a matte finish, then it's it's a lot easier. You're just sandblasting it. And But if you're polishing it, then you have to take a polish wheel and every single part you have to polish every square inch of it. And you have to polish it to the point where it's like literally a mirror. And that's the biggest pain in the ass. Uh, of the entire mm. process and that's why if you get a polish gun it's so, like usually several hundred dollars more than a matte finish gun is because it takes wow. like several extra hours to do mm. really because wow. of that prep step before it even goes in a bath or gets color added to it right so uh, yeah oddly enough the finish is actually you you do that before the color because mm. you have to prep the metal for because then mm. anodizing as a process is it's it's adding i mean I, you could probably describe it better but it's 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 using like electrical like bond right to actually apply a paint deeper into a metal I, it's something uh, i know it's something along those lines it's you're pretty close so the way ryan hall described it uh, is the way that i understood it the best so aluminum um it, in order to apply color to the metal you actually have to force the aluminum to rust and the rust is what accepts the dye particles to give it the color okay uh, but on top of that the uh, aluminum rusts clear so you can add like whatever colors you want to it and it also the rust will uh, make it a, m significantly more sturdy because al raw aluminum is somewhat soft mm, okay interesting and and Damn, okay science and it is it, do you guys use dialysis for that or because i know it is there's i i've heard something with the process of it is like adding it's it's using some electron base or something to actually like have it yeah. apply it, yeah we put it in a in a bath and uh we run a, electrical current through it to force it to rust faster okay so yeah that's that may have been what i've heard before but that and then from there it it's and, from there well, you you dye it and then uh use there's a bunch of different techniques to dye it depending on the finish well sure uh, and i was or... going to say with something like this a fade piece you know obviously you're slowly transitioning from you know one hue one color one dye to a next i i mean how is that process i mean don't don't give us the trade secrets if you can't but mm -hmm. you know what i is that a really does that add more complexion to it or like complexity uh that that uh can turn into trial and error um but depending on the color that you're wanting like it's or, or the effect like if, if you're doing a fade it's it's not too difficult you're just like basically dipping it into one color like the lighter color first and then uh the part that you want darker then you dip that part seconds because you the 
you have to do the lighter color first and then the darker color essentially goes over the lighter color and mixes with it yeah i was glad you um, grabbed that gun because that's kind of the one i'm thinking of because that finish that. is just wild on this this is uh his ex-girlfriend so brandon's fiance that's uh her marker that she plays with um did you nice. guys have who was it who got that done um it was uh ryan hall's company arc i think yeah um he did it and like you're 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 describing the uh, um the process for it and i'm i'm trying to like picture it in my mind especially with this gun because it's it's kind of a fade but hoppers in the way in brenda the, <laughs> oops sorry uh it, it's hard to see in the camera but like it's in like different angles yeah it, it, with different angles the the colors pop out you know the green at, at this angle as i turn it this way it kind of goes more purple gotcha. and blue and you know i don't know it's god it's so complicated <laughs> <laughs> it's a piece of art <laughs> anodizing really is a technique of art truly i want to get a cool pro i want to get myself a cool project because you know i like i like the whole prestigious thing about them and plus i know i'll treat my i treat i mean i don't know about treating them well but i let they, they should last a while well you know. i yeah, I think that's a good point, Hatch. You don't treat markers well. You just use the same marker for a long time. Like you don't, they, you're not Logan who's well. getting a new one every four they months. They treat me well, to be honest. And that's 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 the thing that I need. I need a I need a, a marker. You need that your lifetime, well. Bay. You need your, you know. Seriously, I'm gonna settle dude, down. My, I'm gonna put a ring on this gun's one, finger, dude. My black and teal one. That she has seen some war. She's seen dude. some she's shit. Seen the trenches. <laughs> so I'm gonna send y'all. I'm going to send you all a couple of photos here in this chat. This, these were all of the markers, all of the anodized markers that we had at our World Cup booth. I, I briefly looked over there. There were some really good ones. That was the booth in the Oasis, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Oh, shit. Ooh. Ooh. All, right, all right, let me pick. Let me pick. That black and teal one is... That one's definitely screaming my name, not even going to lie. The pink and, the pink and white, that was also, that was also fire. All right, so, uh, sorry, I just got a text, and I, I definitely want to remember to talk about that. So I'm gonna write that Ooh, down. Let's go like over some of these. I'll throw a couple of these on the on the screen now. I mean, yeah, yeah. no, there's definitely, like I said, pieces of art uh, in here, and these were so were were these the gold to banana? Were these like project guns, or were these like uh, like what's the right way to say? Like, was this technique trying to make some cool products or was this like a project and i don't mean wow. project i mean the company name project was this like a project you know series or something we were thinking about making that we didn't or i guess kind of walk us through some of them so uh, yeah technique um Archie and Ryan wanted to learn the anodizing process, partly because when they were um, sending markers off to other like companies to to do the anodizing, especially with like the original run of Project G's. Um, and Ryan's gone on other podcasts and said this as well. Uh, they were like they were sometimes getting faced with huge backlogs. And so it, it would mm -hmm. take a lot longer to get their markers back. And so they thought, you know what, let's just learn how to do it ourselves. Okay. And that's when they hired me back in July was to kind of help them out with the process because it, it is, there's quite a few like kind of tedious parts of it. Um, just time but, consuming type work. Oh yeah. 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 Mostly the polishing. And then of course, like the disassembling, reassembling, but uh, the, I mean, as, as far as what these are for, like the uh, project wanted to get some kind of unique color similar to what's been released in the past, except we're doing it in-house now. Okay. So wow. yeah, this was kind of a, a verification step almost to kind of, uh, you know, all right, we're taking it into our own, you know, hands. So let's, mm. yeah, That's you know, let's, let's try to get near yeah. it or yeah. And I, yeah. I'm guessing and some of these pieces are for sale or maybe were at the event. Um, all of these were sold at the event. However, Even <laughs> um, all, all of these are one of three. So okay. uh, we're in the process of making the other two of each of these. I know uh, kind of that, that ocean fade one, we've already sold the second one, but the, the others of these sh should hopefully be coming up, you know, within probably the next month or two. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah so we're, stay we're tuned. I'm guessing in, the in project, the like it'll process, drop on that yeah. website. Yeah. Yeah. Did, so, 
Sorry, did you have previous experience with with anodizing? Uh, is, is that why they kind of brought you on board to to help or? Oh, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> uh, so um, I already had a connection with Ryan through doing the footage and kind of the stat tracking for X Factor uh, throughout the year. And um, to be completely honest, like uh, it fell into my lap so before this i was an elementary school teacher for the last four years no and way. fucking in... lord this man's a saint god damn <laughs> send a prayer up jesus christ he had to go through yeah. zoom school and shit oh my Dude, god for real for real don't even get me started on that so oh i and in you have more june, patience I than like, i ever will brother yeah in june in june i i left that job and uh so now i'm like kind of doing night school um but in the meantime, uh, Ryan and Archie, they were going through and they were like, you know what? Hey, let's start ramping up this anodizing thing. And they reached out to one of our mutual friends and they were like, hey, do you know of anybody that uh, could be a good hire for this? And uh, I was kind of the first name that he mentioned. And Ryan already knew me. Archie kind of knew me. I had both of them on my show previously as well. So, uh, you know, connections were somewhat there. And it's uh, I think it's just been very like kind of everything happening at the right time mm -hmm. yeah dude that's awesome that's badass dude yeah i think uh i i think one of the, the great things about working for for those two i've done a, a couple things with project they've needed some media for stuff and i've helped them out with that uh one of the cool things is they both have a very clear vision so it's it's definitely you know it's a little easier to kind of oh okay you guys want to go this direction i can you know do this work for you or you know it, it's just a little easier i feel like to work for someone you know like them who have that like okay top down i already kind of have an idea what i want to do you know how do you help me out with this how you know how do you you know what what do we need to do to make it so your job is done um and so yeah so no that's awesome projects are a really cool company they're they're making some awesome you know some of the soft good stuff they're doing obviously the the limited edition markers are freaking crazy but uh yeah all right well no that's that's sick man i i didn't know you were actually kind of you know helping out more hands-on doing the you know anodizing stuff for them i knew you were working the booth and stuff at, at uh that cup and that's that's why i ran into you i saw you in oasis i was like hey what's up what's going on christian um but oh, yeah. yeah man so that's that's awesome um we are kind of coming to the end of uh, of our time tonight and there is one topic completely outside of all of this that i do need to think we need to get into um hatch you got your car back finally what's going on with that oh, man yeah, yeah yeah so so this, this, uh, is for, this is for our listeners of the show that know the whole you know what's going on but yeah hatch's car was broken into everything was you know mad chaotic that was the day they were leaving for world cup uh but yeah i mean fill us in what's what's been going on with that in the background okay so one thing that i forgot to mention that uh i definitely didn't notice until i was already down the highway with uh leaving uh cedar and and yvonne's dude with that, all that thing being broken, dude, had no turn signal, dude. So it's like, how am I gonna, <laughs> how am I gonna go, go down the highway with no turn Three signal? Three hour like, drive, like just being I'm that like, guy. I'm like trying to like look behind myself and I'm like going to flick it and I'm like, and I look down and it's like hanging there and I'm like, bruh. So now I got a, got a new turn signal, feeling good, feeling crispy, <laughs> steering wheel a little stiff, but you know, it is what it is. Grateful to be alive, you know, could have been way worse. They, they have to do, do like a new rental? wiring harness and everything or? you know i do kind of miss the rental brando's brando actually got to see it this past weekend brando brando got to see it in person so i was i was zipping that, the mountains was nice. in that so <laughs> yeah it was cool. uh, oh. i don't know if you heard my question did they have to replace like the wiring harness and shit like what what all was damaged in uh in the car so basically uh all of the steering wheel was messed up like all like the, the steering and column and everything connected. down yeah, yeah. uh turn signal that was like that was broken off um it's probably when they were trying to jack everything off because that's yeah. yeah the kia that's boys exactly way what, they gotta exactly get down for sure yeah. that's the worst when you have to jack everything off yeah by yeah, 100 uh, well you know i like this guy yeah, I like this guy. Gotta have that's why brandon's on. a doctor because he loves doing that <laughs> and it's what he does over yeah, there I'll at do doctor it. school or whatever he so, does yeah, during his I'll, day I'll, I'll i'll save the specimen too don't worry about it <laughs> god damn it but you know so yeah, Grateful so you got it back. back. Insurance take care of stuff, or what? How is that all going? You know, down? I still had to, I still had to pay a little bit of money because you know, people got to, people got to make a living, I guess. So, 
that <laughs> your car was broken into and attempted to be robbed and you're still having to cover repairs that sucks i'm Just sorry a little man bit of it, so it's fucking annoying dude fuck those guys like i said like i said last time i'm shooting first i'm shooting first well good luck in california that's all i gotta say God, that's what that's what's so unfortunate bro they could they could be they could be they could hijack my Hatch. car be sitting outside waving at me low, like that they're that they're hijacking it but if i retaliate i get in trouble that's what i'm saying go to texas brother texas oh, is waiting open man. arms yeah, for you thank you yeah they're yeah, like it, that's dude. yeah hell yeah brother you're supposed to no, defend that car are there a lot of texans that are like oh my god fucking californians coming over yeah, but the thing is, is, we're not all that much different because people don't realize Northern Californians, and especially as you get more towards Nevada and away from the fucking cities. We're, dude, I grew up on a farm most of my life. I spent a lot of times in a shaker shaking walnut trees. Like, that's how my summer was. So it wasn't Redneck, like I was I fucking at Redneck, San Francisco all the time. Like, no, yeah, I hated I, that I grew place. up in Vacaville, like... Yeah, yeah, totally yeah. you what? definitely know what it means. Yeah, All right, yeah, man. another dude. California transplant. That's two in a row that we've had that's moved out of Texas. <laughs> Shout nice, out, Scott. Dude. But uh, but yeah, man. No, you definitely uh, you went to a better place, and I'm I'm on the track and trail trying to join you down there. That's my next uh, life goal. Well, uh, I hope you don't plan on buying a house anytime soon. Well, I do you see me? I'm a 25 year old male. Home ownership is not in my you know future at all, so it's okay. You could have said 45-year-old male, and it probably would have still applied. That's how crazy the house, housing market is right now. You're not Damn. wrong, but yeah, no, I unfortunately, I can't, you know, work at the local cafe and make enough to pay off my $20,000 a year house that I bought while I was raising a family of four because it's the year 19... 19- freaking 58 and that can be yeah, possible exactly whenever whenever the kids are saying ah, i was born in the wrong decade that's what they truly mean yeah, yeah no i was just i wasn't i wasn't born a boomer so i'm i'm screwed that's what home ownership <laughs> is I come down to a house for 20 bucks and 10 raspberries god damn it i'll be in a firm good handshake. Luck with that yeah, yeah. A firm handshake with the firm handshake don't forget the firm handshake all right well so okay good to know i'm i'm, I'm proud you got your car back everything's kind of kind of back a little bit window you rolls me, up and down you sent me the video of you finding out about it because you haven't you, you like I, it was the neighbor right because I, I don't yeah, see doesn't security, have the neighbor security cam is the, thank god for their neighbors right <laughs> i mean realistically the security cam didn't really do shit for me in the long run except for my insurance claims but well whatever. at least you got but, the insurance claims yeah, so, so that helps the, out the best part out of it is the fact that i got my 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 reaction my panic attack dude i was like i was like walking out in the middle of the street dude I i'll was throw like, it up on the screen right now but yeah you dude. could just by looking at his body language you see what's going on and what's going through his head dude, so brando back me up dude i was like i was freaking out like i was on the i was on the verge i think of we all would like i i don't think that's an unnatural yeah. reaction no it, it was it was i it was a stress of yes your car's broken in it's fucked you don't know what to do you're not even in you're hours away from home yep oh hey by the way you have a plan that leaves in tw two hours like we gotta we gotta go yeah we gotta you know, go and... right now <laughs> going to an event that you've paid already hundreds of dollars uh... to go perform and play at and if you miss it you won't be able to like oh god just stress level to the max so yeah, I feel but, sympathetic you know, for you there, brother. The memories I'll truly never trade, right? Thanks for the that's, memories, that's even stress. though they weren't so great. <laughs> yep, that stress, you know. Did you get that, Brandon? That was, yeah, that was yep. a reference. Yeah, yeah I'm I glad like you it. did. Thanks, Thank buddy. You. You're old, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, we're old. Yay! Um... <laughs> All right, guys. So old people. we we are gonna kind of bring the show uh bring bring it home a little bit, but uh I mean a couple things we got to clear on up. Uh, really appreciate Christian for jumping on tonight. Thank um, you, bro. Go check out in the pits podcast. Where you know specific links. How how are people gonna go find you? Obviously, we're gonna put put some stuff in the YouTube description. Uh, but if you're listening on audio, where can people go check you out at? Yeah, so uh, in the pits, you can listen in on YouTube to watch the video. We're also on uh, Amazon, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Okay. And nice. yeah, usually Just in uh, the pits, all yeah, yeah no crazy in the pits, spellings or anything. Podcast is the full name. Oh, okay. Got to get that SEO in there. That's always that helps out. Yeah, for sure. And <laughs> uh, yeah, usually uh, I do live episodes every Wednesday evening, but I'll, uh, I'll post ahead of time if it's going to be like either at a different time or on a different day. And then uh, I usually am pretty quick to get the recordings up usually the next day. Awesome. Nice. All right. Well, definitely. Uh, yeah, go check that out. Uh, and then it's just in the pits on Instagram, right? Or is it? 
It's, something else. It, uh, so on Instagram, it's in the pits paintball podcast. All in the pits paintball podcast. Okay, cool. So go uh, head over there. We're going to have some links in the description, like I said, on YouTube. Um, I need two things from both my guys. I need hatch. I need a code word of the week. Yep, this yep. is uh this is a common one. This is happens every week. And uh, if you're new around here, well, hey, uh, we give out the code word of the week. Just send it to us in a DM, in a comment. Leave it somewhere. Let us know that you uh, listen to the end of the show and that you're a true homie. So what's what's going on? What's the one this week, Hatch? All right. Well, let me just say, so with what I love what you're doing, Christian. You're freaking badass with all the uh, all the knowledge that you're bringing into uh, a single platform with all of Texas, you know? So I think uh, with the code word that we, that could be fitting is Texas love. Cause that is like the only thing that like, when I first think of Texas paintball, that is like the family aspect of it. It's just so loving, so inviting. So code word of the week, Texas love message us that DM it, DM Christian, put it in the comments. Dude's, uh, look, at that. It, look at that. Look at that. It's kind of like a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He had that locked and ready to go. Damn. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah kind of kind of funny story there. I actually just, uh, on YouTube got accepted into the YouTube partner program. So I've got nice, really getting some, getting some, uh, emojis made. And one of those is actually going to be Texas love. And that's the, exact one that's be there. there you go. Yeah. Let's go. Great minds think alike. No, that's awesome, man. And so, yeah, obviously you're going to be now able to join, you know, memberships and stuff on your guys' YouTube channel. That's that's awesome. Definitely go uh, check that out and support them over there. And even if you just listen to shows, don't skip the ad. Just watch the ad all the way through. Click that, on it. That other hey, go check that it picture? out. Is that the Texas Flexus? That's Texas Strong. <laughs> Texas Strong. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I had a feel. Is it, is it Houston Strong or Texas Strong? I know that's... that one. That one's Texas Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Astros. Ooh. Um, that's something <laughs> like we're not Texas gonna. Flexus. <laughs> we're not gonna talk about. That's a good we one. We do. So Texas Love Code Word of the Week. Thank you, Hatch. We're also we're on the same wavelength. We're introducing a new segment, a new kind of wrap up recall segment of the week. And this one's for Brando because I felt yeah. bad that he had to sit over there, uh, you know, kind of quietly by himself. And uh, with it being his year anniversary next week, he's finally becoming a big boy. Oh my uh, he's God, becoming Brando. a good part of the show. Ooh. So, uh, Brando, who was the cool guy of the week? Cool guy of the week. Sending it right now oh, in God. the chat. All right. This <laughs> is send me this a is Twitter. Captain, you know, this is Captain from, England. All right. This, this is Captain England in his. Oh, the uh, bike tire. I saw this one today. <laughs> oh, my God. Follow this is up. great. He takes, he is fighting off so many cops. And oh, I mean, they end up God. taking him down, but. But his boy Captain America comes in at the end, right at the end. Captain yeah, America have throw to watch the wheel. The that that captain's amazing. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Well, this will definitely all be on screen as we're uh, talking about it. I'm going through it now. Oh, oh God. You'll okay. You'll know when Captain America comes in. Okay. Oh, they got the they yep. got the baton out uh -huh. now. It's starting to get locked down. <laughs> oh, oh, the mace is coming it's... in. Okay. I'm just getting to yep. that. Oh, all chaos. All wait. chaos. The camera phone is down it's on the chaotic. ground. And they're all going after Captain Oh, God. Captain. And then Captain. the fucking... <laughs> wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> Captain Dude. America has to save Captain England because <laughs> Captain Lincoln's badass. He's taking them all down. How do they get the, oh how they get the tire off so fast, bro? That's like the tire <laughs> comes out of that nowhere. Handy. That's uh, okay. Well, that's amazing. That's that's absolutely amazing. Damn, God dude. damn it. All if right, you're Brandon. listening, someone please put the Avengers Assemble theme over that video. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you need to do. And yeah, instant meme that's hit so there. Good. So that's our cool guy of the week. Wait, Captain America, not Captain England. No, no, well. You know, it, it, it's a tag team. It's featuring Captain England, but featuring he's being saved by Captain America. All right. So the, the headlining the artist is Captain America, but featuring Captain England. We love that. All right. Yes. Well, that's our cool guy of the week. Thank you, Brandon. Um, we we got to go through a couple of uh, housekeeping topics, things I always talk about on the show. Make sure you drop a rating, guys. If it's your first show, you check this out because Christian's on it. Well, hey, I appreciate you. And one of the ways that you can help support the show for absolutely free it takes 10 seconds to do. Just drop a rating. Hit five stars. Literally, it's that easy. You could be done already. Just hit down on the app. Go. I'm waiting for you. Did you do it? Hit the button. Just hit the fucking button. Come on, Joan. Fucking Cletus. You people out there. Okay, they, I gave you guys enough time. Uh, subscribe to the show as well. You, you're probably looking at that button too. It's on the same screen, so just hit the sub button. It's going to let you know whenever the show is ready to go. It's going to have it downloaded right there on your phone, so that way you never miss a second of the content. Uh, and like I said, both those things, free to do. They help support the show and make us look good to 
you know, all the executives and the heads up that we're trying to impress. Uh, so go do that real quick. I appreciate it. If you want to, you know, maybe add a little money to that and help support us, you can head over to Patreon. Patreon.com is a place where you can get bonus content, access to the episode early without ads. And we also have some uh, additional things waiting for you over there. Our, our movie nights where we you know, watch through a piece of old PayPal content or something that's coming out and uh, give our thoughts about it and kind of, you know, hang out with the boys, watch a movie, watch a video, see what's up. Evergreen content waiting for you over there. So head over to patreon.com slash mafia underscore productions. Uh, it's annoying, but someone took mafia productions. So mafia underscore productions. That's how you're going to get access over there. Go check that out. Uh, hit the free trial. If you just want to see what's up, uh, you can do that as well. We have the merchandise website, XXV, the label that's down in the description. You can check that out. I'm actually not wearing some tonight. I'm wearing a sweatshirt because it's cold. It's getting cold in California. All right. That's so. what happens. Uh, but we do have new stuff on the way from them. I literally was I'm being sent a sample from Michael Diaz today. So that's going to be uh, coming out soon. We're going to hopefully have some, uh, you know, shots and stuff ready to go for that. So, yeah, we're getting excited. Stabbers don't get stabbed. We're going to love to see that. Uh, we got to talk about our sponsors real quick. Uh, we haven't talked about them yet in the show. We got to bring up Nectar Energy and Liquid IV. We appreciate both of them. Uh, Liquid IV, your hydration multiplier. If you're out at the field, you're feeling like uh, you're getting a little low on that water, throwing in a water bottle. It's going to pick you up. It's got all the right vitamins and minerals to do so. Uh, and yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great flavor tasting adventure as well. Good throw, Brandon. That was impressive. Uh, you got all the great flavors over there. We talked about them on their website. They also have the new variety packs, so you can check those out. We mentioned those the last couple weeks. Try out a couple different flavors. See which one's right for you. Uh, maybe it's the sugar-free version. Maybe it's the sugar version. Whichever one you want to do, it's going to be waiting for you over at liquid, liquidiv.com. Make sure you use the promo code MAFIA underscore MOFFIT. You're going to get 20% off. Free shipping as well, so definitely use that if you're going over there. Might as well save a couple of dollars. Nectar Energy, that's the other one up on the docket tonight, N-E-C-T-R dot energy. Uh, appreciate the boys over there, little lit boomers that are keeping you energized. Uh, these are, you know, little little pouch. Always want to show one off. Looks similar to Zin or maybe a tobacco pouch, something like that. But the big difference is there is no nicotine. There is no tobacco in this product. Uh, it is just caffeine and a neurotropic waiting for you to get you pepped up a little bit. No, uh, you know, none of that sugar crash, none of that super hype, uh, over caffeinated stuff. Uh, if you just need, you know, a little pickup, I know Hatch likes to use one of these when he's on his way home out. from the field. Uh, it gives him enough energy to get home, but also, you know, he's not staying up all night because he's, you know, been chugging an, ener uh, an energy drink super late. Uh, head over to nectar.energy, N-E-C-T-R dot energy. It's where you're going to get more information about this. Promo code over there is one word, Mafia Productions. All one word, Mafia Productions. And last but definitely not least, we got to talk about welts, boys. If you want to earn your welts, it's here. head over to welts.com. And that is W-E-L-T-Z. They're on your screen. They're down in the description. Head over there, check out some of the merchandise and apparel that they have available. Use code... FTS guys we finally did it we got a three letter code it's literally the yes. easiest one we're ever gonna get FTS it's gonna save you some dollar dollar bills over there it's gonna make that order a little bit cheaper for you and you're gonna be supporting not only us but a pretty awesome uh player and a couple guys who are out of Texas paintball as well so head over to welts.com go grab some stuff they have some snapbacks over there. They got some jerseys listed. Uh, if you want to get an undershirt, a custom undershirt like Scott wears on the field, uh, you know, kind of a throwback to that old day when everyone used to have the really long tee underneath with your, uh, you know, custom stuff that you wanted on it. Go head over to welts.com. Check out some of their things. And, uh, yeah, earn your welts over there. Appreciate those boys. Um, well, guys, that's that's it. That's my long list of lengthy things I got to talk I about. But, hey, we're supposed to talk one. about it. What's, what's up, Patch? All right, Christian. Luckily, we're in, we're late in the show because now it's only the hardcore people. Okay, Jesus Christ. we've do already outro. I know we, what's happening do here. Think, do you think your team can survive against a fully grown chimp in a Chipotle? A chimp? Are we talking like silverback or? No, I'm talking like chimpanzee, like Bubbles from Michael Jackson. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, in a in a Chipotle. Well, we've got we've got ten dudes on our team, so I I sure hope so. Uh, I'm I'm gonna say yes. Can can at least one of us survive? Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. One person has to survive. Yeah, someone's got to tell the story. Say yes. Okay, so who's the, who's the person on your team that, without a doubt, is going first? 
is gonna die. Um, <laughs> who's, who's leading the charge to save the boys? Uh, who's? I'll I'll probably take one for the team there. To be completely honest, um, it's probably either me or uh, our other uh, center guy, Dylan Strickland. Uh, he's he's uh he's our bowling ball down the center. So it's probably probably one he's of us. He's taking it on his shield. There. Gotcha. He's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's the All open. Right. He's the opening show. He's he's gotcha. opening up the lane. He's gonna make sure he trades out. Right. He's getting make, his make one sure for you one. Ask your teammates. Make sure you ask your teammates. Be like, boys, do we really think we could take like a full grown chimp? <laughs> and make them make them think. Be like, it's got to be right. in the group chat. It's got to be an actual discussion. It can't just be a oh yeah we all agree or oh no we don't agree. It's <laughs> this is how you, you realize if the boys factors. are boys. You know. I've seen a legitimate clip where a monkey ripped a dude's scalp off like a little capuchin monkey. Thing gave no shits. In like a single second, the guy's scalp was gone. And also, so I think really people don't realize this is Hatch is serious when he asks these questions. He he really wants to know if your team, your paintball team, can survive against what other animal or whatever animal is going through his head at the time. So exactly, if you're out there, ask these questions to your teammates. Find out what is going on in the trenches with your boys. If you can't, gotta find, find a new team why. and find out why and fix it, or get a new team. <laughs> I'm just glad you didn't ask about the grizzly bear because I the grizzly bear is a whole other animal. I agree. I, I agree. I've been watching more and more footage on him, and it's been changing my answer ever since. <laughs> yeah, I told you, like, Hatch. Grizzlies are not nothing to dude, fuck with. No, when I sent that one clip to the, that one night we were recording with the two grizzly bears fighting, dude. Yep, I know exactly take, what clip you're talking about. Yeah, we threw it in the squads. podcast. It's it's yeah, it's a big one. It would take ten squads of us to fucking kill that thing. Maybe yeah, that's a you, general question for like, at, could NXL barehanded take down a grizzly bear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can every team in semi-pro team up on one grizzly bear? <laughs> it's the Even one thing me. that'll bring them all together. Yep. Okay, Even so. then, I'm, I'm still, uh, there's, there's still definitely money going towards the grizzly bear's way. Because like every swing's a one shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that <laughs> plus so also... True, dude it's very different is it grizzly bear with cubs or is it just grizzly bear because those are two different animals blood, as well this shit's blood blood lusted, lusted, I thought. Bro, this yeah. shit's blood blood lusted. lusted okay then we're assuming like cubs protecting you know mother protecting cubs yeah we're all fucked it's gonna eat yeah. four or five of us this at is least for survival. This, this this is like for survival the bear thinks he's gonna die when you're blood lusted bro are Back we still in the, the chipotle on this one or not for the bear <laughs> yeah th that's just not enough room i mean the bear's gonna run you down you're gonna have no time no, I think yeah, that's our agree. only hope is if we like hope that, you know, the, the bear just runs into the foundation enough. We just bring the whole you building know, down on it. That's our only damn, chance. So you're going to do a shit, raging dude. bull-esque red flag, try to get out of the way. I mean, I, I don't see other other options there, really, because like even if we're going like, you know, fight dirty, like go for go for balls and everything like. Mm, see, like, but this goes back to this goes back to the DMG squad of slathering up Logan and Caden and honey and letting that bear get get a little slow, get a little heavy. You know, it's after a full grown meal. <laughs> it's not going to want to just take on everything as hard. But you got to remember oh. it's bloodlusted. And but I guess the other it's question is, are through hungry? Logan and Caden first? So you've got at least 45 True. seconds. I got two swings. <laughs> I got two swings while he's killing them. When, it, the other question is, when's the fight? Is it like right now? Or is it like, do we get like a full training cycle to go after this thing? <laughs> do or? I get six months before I have to get in the ring with the bear? Um, That's an important question. I'll give you your team in their prime paintball season, like whatever they are and like in the middle so of like the season. September, October, kind yeah, of like September, going into October. cup, you know, trying yeah. to be the best we can be. Yep. Right after Chicago, you know, that, that area of your paintball team. So. Wow. It's a, it's All a right. hard question to ask. We, we somehow stretched ask. another 11 minutes onto the show after I was trying to end it, but <laughs> beautiful. I love it. Hatch. That's why you're here. You're our wild card. Never know what the fuck we're going to get with uh, Steven Hatch. I feel and, like I have and... to ask everybody that now. You don't have to, and I'm going to be honest. When Maddie Marshall comes on the show, you better not ask him an animal fighting question. At I least, feel like I have not at first. To. Not at first. Not at you first, are giving at us first. at least a couple hours of big boy adult talking moments, and then you oh, can bring absolutely. in that shit. That's my rules for you on that episode. Um, let's uh, let's bring this on home, boys. So, I mean, for our lovely guest Christian, 
Dallas Smith now. He's got the new hyphen added in. Feels like a brand new man. Uh, from brother. In the Pence podcast, thank you again for giving us some of your time. You're over on that Texas time zone, so I know you're staying up late tonight to help us out. We appreciate that. Glad we got to chop it up with you a little bit, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll get you back on towards the start of the new year, kind of wrapping up and getting into everything going on then. But uh, yeah, definitely appreciate you coming on, man. For my two other hosts, they're here every week, guys. Brandon Brando, Baird, Stephen Hatch. Appreciate both of them. My name is Ryan Mafia Moffitt. And we're going to be checking you guys out on the next one. Bring us home, match. Bye. <laughs> See you guys later.